What's going on everybody? Santa C here bringing you another week of the KCM. If it's your first time, welcome. We have a fantastic lineup, plenty of great ASL players, and we're getting into game number one. Let's start it off. All right, here we go. It is Mind over here in the top right hand corner and Best down in the bottom left. This is 76. And here is your lineup. Translated from Korean, we got Royal Light, Mind, YSC, Best, Snow, Queen, Soma, Solki. Now, Mind was one player I was really excited to have here in the KCM. It's uh, been a while since we've seen him. Not a regular facet of our show, but is a fantastic player. Very, very interesting games as of late. He's been around for a really, really long time, but is on another level lately. Unfortunately, though, he's here on 76 against Best. I don't know how this is going to go. Most of the Terran, play, uh, Terran versus Protoss matches we've seen here have been extremely one-sided, with the Protoss just absolutely dominating. So... Um, we'll see if Best goes for the same strategy as every other Protoss has done here so far, which is, of course, that immediate tank into a robotics facility. Then you get your Reaver out. You might pressure with a few Zealots, then just drop onto all the islands, take all the bases, go into carriers and kill the Terran. That's pretty much how things have gone on this match. Uh in this matchup, on this map so far. But mind here, um, considering that's become kind of the standard, I guess mind should have a good idea of what his opponent's gonna do, and maybe he's found some way to counter it. That's what I'm hoping, anyway. We've got him throwing down the barracks here. It, this is the first time we've had a cross map positions, by the way, in Protoss versus Terran on this map. And it is a very long rush distance. You have to go all the way around this uh, middle area. The 76 in the middle kind of blocks everything out. So sending the first Zealot, I mean, it's going to take a long time to get over here. And also mind not taking the back natural. So uh, he's going to have a lot of stuff here in the front in order to fight in the early game he's adding on a factory here and i wonder if he's going to float this down onto the low ground as well or what he's going to end up doing with this is he going to go into goliath with drop as we've seen over and over and over again from terran players or does he want to go into wraith which we've seen I think one time, maybe Light or somebody like that played uh, some Wraith style. No, that was Mong, if I remember correctly. Mong on this map, but that was versus Zerg, actually. Sorry, guys, my memory just absolutely sucks. I cast so much StarCraft lately that uh, it's very, very tough for me to remember uh, the details of past games, but... I've been paying special attention to 76 as a map and the way that games are playing out here. So I figured I would try anyway. <laughs> Big mistake. Now, we do have Best looking to take potentially his natural. I think there's a pylon on the low ground there. We've got a command center here for mind as well. But uh, best, I don't really see any purpose of taking this this lower base, this, this front natural here. Um, when you have the robo finished and you can just land on an island and take an island base instead. Island bases are just so much better uh, for the Protoss. And with the Reaver, there's nothing that mine can bring uh, in a single dropship that can contest with whatever uh, best can bring in a single shuttle that being possibly a reaver or two just completely destroys whatever mind can bring across here now loading up four zealots four zealots in a drop and there's nothing back at home absolutely nothing so uh, he's going to be in a bit of trouble here. May end up losing some SCVs. I wonder what's coming out of this factory and the starport. If this is a dropship and a tank, 
Zealots are going to do very, very well. Okay, there's two vultures out now, so he is loading up a vulture drop here. He's waiting for a couple more vultures to pop. And when that dropship comes out, going to get to work here, going across the map to deal some damage. Zealots are going to unload away from the front here. And there are some mines. So, dragon mines. It hits every single vault, uh, zealot there. Wow. All the zealots got hit by that mine. So, probably one of the best mines. Uh, mine hits that we could have possibly seen in this situation. Fighting the zealot with the um, SCV. These are pretty low HP. So, surround and kill. Nicely done. I don't think he's lost even a single SCV. Holy crap. Very, very good defense there for... Mind really holding that off well. Now we're going to load up. Oops, he accidentally picked up the SCV? Really? He was like building something. I didn't know you could pick up an SCV while it was building something. It's interesting. But as you can see, you actually have to pick up your vultures in order to get them down this ramp. This ramp is so incredibly small, not even vultures can fit down it. Dark Templars can walk down it, Zealots can walk down it, Marines and Medics, Fire Bats can all walk down it, but unfortunately, vultures, dragoons, tanks, all the main units for both races can't really walk down there. now. We've got some of these dragoons that have been... What's it called? Elevated out of the main base. Some tanks being elevated down as well. Mines being set up here. But this is only one tank and three dragoons. Gotta be very careful here. Doesn't want to lose this tank. Trying to throw down more mines, but they're being all shot down. May end up losing this missile turret as well so that he can push forward a little bit farther, a little bit closer. Yeah, now he can come right up on top of this. Nice drop thing that Supply Depot, really, really smart play there by mine. You can see Best was looking to dive on that tank, but the uh, Supply Depot just blocking him long enough here to allow mine to keep those tanks alive. Really, really good play there. Another missile turret coming up, and finally going to load up some vultures once again, possibly to actually go for a drop this time. I, I feel like... All Mind has done so far is just try to elevate his units down to the low ground. That's a pretty costly... Um, pretty costly movement between the main and natural. And I think that's one of the reasons why this map sucks so much for Terran. You have to get this dropship just to move your tanks to low ground. That's pretty rough. And uh, at this point, it looks like Best has complete vision of everything that's coming out of the base. You can see red dots all around mine space. Those are all observers. He's going to spot this dropship coming down to the low ground here. He's going to take his back natural. Okay. Interesting. Best, meanwhile, taking a base in the top left. He has his natural as well. So going on to three bases here. Some mines being thrown down. Here comes a shuttle. There is, of course, a wraith, but I think that there's going to be two dragoons in this. Two dragoons. Yeah, landing here, and this is going to shut this down pretty easily. There we go. Dropping out a couple of tanks now. He can juggle these tanks. There you go. As soon as the dragoon fires, the firing shot is very, very slow. Easy to dodge there. And uh, mine just going to keep that base alive. So really nicely done. Um, I'm surprised we don't have a reaver yet. Where is that reaver? That's another thing that you can actually do uh, with the dropship as well is dodge reaver shots because they do come out so slowly and the tank shot is near instantaneous. You can pick up your... You can take a shot on the reaver and then pick up your tank uh, and dodge the reaver shot, but um, it takes a lot of micro, a lot of attention, and it's really not optimal. Um, yeah, very tough to do. He would rather just have the critical mass of tanks here that you just can't drop uh, in this location, have enough turrets and everything. Now, I want to mention one thing about this. This back base. Oh, actually, we're going to get some action here. Excuse me. Double shuttle coming in to the back natural. Going to drop some dragons here. Nine connection is amazing. Reaver here in the middle, though. 
does lose the shuttle with the reaver inside of it. Ooh, not the best drop from Bess at all. This, these turrets, perfectly placed. So there's no real um, dead zone spot where Bess can just kind of camp over top of those tanks and just continuously drop out. He's always being hit by turrets, and he loses. He loses that drop. Double robo to follow up. And what I was trying to say is that we've got two gases here in the back natural for mine but important to note that these two gas these two gases will mine out very very quickly they are pretty low uh Res they have pretty low reserves of gas, so um, the base in the top left hand corner which best is taken for his uh, second gas that's gonna last a lot longer the two bases in the middle as well 70 uh the seven and the six have a lot more gas too so very important to know that uh mind is on a bit of a clock here whereas best he's expanding he's growing he his uh gas income is going to last for a very very long time um and he can continue to take bases like this all over the map looks like he's going to take his own back natural uh taking bottom right it's not a bad idea either because, again, vultures can't even get up there. It's basically an island. Uh, you have to bring dropships to do any sort of attacking into that position. Um, so, yeah, taking the bottom right hand corner is just amazing for Protoss. And it nets you a nine mineral patches and one full yield gas. It's it's pretty much perfect. Now you couldn't ask for more as a Protoss player. Now, that's still roaming around here. He doesn't actually have an observer with this army, so he needs to get, get one out. He does have double robo, so that shouldn't be a problem. Observer's gonna come out here and help him to clear those mines. There's the first few Goliaths being loaded up, and yes, it is going to be that style that we've seen over and over again. Goliath drops. Basically, Goliaths are the best unit that you can bring. Um, Basically, the best bang for your buck for each dropship that you're bringing. And also, you know that your opponent's going to want to go for a mass shuttle. If they're uh, countering your drops with mass shuttles, then, you know, having Goliaths there, not a bad idea. Especially if they have range, you just right-click on a couple of those shuttles and you can take out a huge amount of units before they even land. That is if you are in range, though. Best, not going to want to allow that to happen. Probably going to uh, steer clear of those Goliaths with his shuttles. Here comes Mind wandering across the map. He wants to set up a base here, set up a outpost here, and try to push the top left-hand corner. Here comes a bunch of best army, reavers, and a ton of shuttles here to assist. Oh, he loses a reaver, unfortunately, not uh, keeping the shuttles with that army. There's a couple of drops here, but plenty more back at home. Brought a couple of... Uh, rounds of Goliaths here to the front just as an emergency measure to keep these uh, keep this outpost alive here. Two tanks can now hit the Nexus and that puts a timer on Bess army. He needs to get up here and stop this although he is taking another base and he can always take the base in the bottom right hand corner. Taking this natural I mean it's nice. It's a lot of money. It's a, There's a lot of um, minerals there to mine but I mean, there's minerals all over this map, and a lot of bases are easier to hold than this base right here. Uh, the, I guess you could say, 11 o'clock base is not the greatest. Much easier to attack uh, for mine, so you, know, you might as well leave that alone. Oh, gonna lose this shuttle? No, nope. keeps it alive. 27 HP, though. Pretty scary stuff. Now gonna la uh, set up here on low ground try to push the high ground this is very very difficult to do um but there's not much here for best unfortunately for him 
you know, if he had some storms here, if he had some reavers here, it would be almost impossible to break this location. But the way things are, mine now, he's got a ton of units on the low ground to cover for his uh, high ground push. Big drop here into the main for mine. So best just going straight up for a counter attack here, trying to take out mine's uh, production facilities right now, killing off a lot of units. But eventually he will lose this fight. The rallies are right there, and he can retreat up to high ground here. You're never gonna get this high ground uh, with just pure zealot, unless you've got storms as well. Storms really helping a lot here to clear these. Uh, SCVs away from the ramp. That's going to allow the Zealots to run up that ramp. You can't really get up there uh, with Dragoons, of course, but Zealots doing a lot of work here. It's like Archon kind of blocking them away. I'm um, going to lift that command center as well. So uh, relegated down to just two bases now. Best going to bring forward a ton of Zealots. Drops them all over the tanks. Going to clear these tanks. Really well done. Um, kind of frustrating stuff here for mine because he did do such a nice dedicated push here but it's just being denied by the fact that uh, it's very very tough to break up onto these high grounds and deny some of these bases he is going to finally get up here looks like with the second round of tanks and the goliaths uh, Vulture's going to be lifted up into that base. Now he can probably try to take that location, actually. And he may try to do so here in a second. Looks like Zealot getting on top, drawing some splash damage onto those SCVs. Could end up getting a lot of kills that way. Trying to mine long distance down there at the natural. Not the best idea here for mine. He probably wants to. Yeah, he's got an SCV here. So he can just start a command center at this location. Ooh, this is going to be Reavers. Oh, 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 oh. Couple kills on this Reaver so far. Looks like dropships are going to come through and just pick off this shuttle. Really nicely done. Hey, that's one way to do it. You never really get to see that, uh, ever. But, uh, it's a pretty good move. Diving on top of, uh, or just, just flying around, uh, <laughs> when Reavers get laid down, dropping Goliaths on top of them, and then just shooting down the shuttle. Seems like a, a reasonable move. Decent move. Now, Besk gonna go ahead and snag bottom right, and he's yet to go into carriers here. I wonder if he's waiting to get some more income going before he makes that transition. Or is he just being stubborn here and gonna stick with this um, kind of composition for the rest of the game, going with Mass Mass Shuttle? Uh, oh, he's gonna get down here and deny this back base. That's a pretty good move from Mind. A little bit risky, though, because he's, he's trying to take the base on the high ground up there, but taking out this, this uh, location, this outpost, is... Seriously massive. It's going to make such a big difference. Crushing the income here from Best, who has not yet uh, secured that base in the bottom right. He is working on it, getting the Nexus now. But he's lost his uh, income here for a little while. Oh, these, uh, these shots from the Reavers are so good. Just absolutely crushing the tank and vulture right now but all the probes are dead so a lot of good probe kills there from mine he's actually ahead in supply now really far ahead 30 supply ahead of best at this point and maybe best starting to fall apart here uh, with the loss of that fourth base he is in a bit of trouble mind only on three bases though i want to remind you that's a lot of dropships seven dropships here Seven dropships. Where is it heading? It looks like it's going for that back natural. There's only three cannons and one high templar. That's two storms, though, as it just hits 150 uh, energy. Oh, okay. One storm there. Another storm. Pretty good, but Reaver's going to be dropped here. Dealing good damage to these tanks, picking off a couple of them. 
He's gonna dive on top of the shuttle. He kills the Reaver. Oh man, really good control here from mine and best. Is he gonna go down here? Oh my god, the first Protoss player to lose on this map? Are you kidding me? Is it really going to happen? Looks like this back natural gonna go down. This outpost likely to fall as well here as the drop chips load up once again. I am shocked that Mind has managed to get this many drop chips, and I don't see seven shuttles from best of course he's been throwing some of them away that's probably the reason why but uh i don't even see two shuttles out right now for best where are all the shuttles where are they at right now it's like this army gonna be moving out heading down towards this bottom right hand corner may want to do the same thing he did in the top right just set up a big army on the low ground and then load up all of his tanks goliaths and try to land on the high ground let's see how this goes best struggling here he's lost some more pylons his supply blocked at the moment got the siege up on low ground here and a big drop coming onto the high ground that's so many zealots though oh my god Goliath tank is not the greatest versus just mass, mass zealot plus Templar. Um, I think breaking into this location is going to be very, very difficult. He's looking for a good spot to land. But I just, I don't really see it. He's going to land right in the front. Okay, trying to land a couple of tanks here. Zealots are just going to rush forward. Storm's going to go down on these drop ships. Ooh, massive, massive damage on some of those drops. I think a few of them actually got picked off as well. That was... Um, a big loss for mine and you can see the supply much closer minerals in the back are running low that gas geyser should be running very low as well uh those two in the back natural so mind he needs to keep the space alive here at the front oh another good storm there nicely done taking some damage from these zealots but gonna dive or from these vultures but gonna dive on them with the zealots looks like the cannons are unpowered right now so needs to get some more pylons there almost flying into the dragoons could have lost some dropships at that point but best re-expanding to the top left now I think he's realizing that uh, to play a game like this as Terran, it takes so much APM, it takes so much attention to do it. You cannot deal with all the drop or all the uh, bases around the map uh, that Protoss can take. Protoss can just constantly take bases and there's really not too much you can do about that. Look at this. Mind focusing so hard on trying to break this high ground here. Yeah, best could just take bases. Just throw down some cannons, throw down some gateways, grab that base. And meanwhile, you know, every time Mind tries to land, throw down a couple storms, run the zealots forward. And, you know, you're barely using APM here. You're hardly um macroing microing at all and you have plenty of time to go ahead and snag islands all over the place so i'm surprised we haven't seen best take the middle yet or mine take the middle because uh the middle bases are very high uh, yield bases they have a ton of minerals and gas uh equ equivalent to a regular main base so those are very high value targets um neither player has tried yet i think that mind realizing that he needs to stay on top of best and prevent him from just getting a ton of bases and uh, tech switching into carrier so he's actually going to come back up here and try to break this location good drop here tons of vultures in this army gonna go after the shuttles good job targeting the shuttles down as quickly as possible a ton of zealots here though this should be enough to clean up all of the Terran on this high ground. Another dropship going to load up. Try to land right here next to the Zealots. I don't think that's the best idea, but he's trying to break this location. Wow. Goliath's doing really, really well here with that plus three, plus two. Uh, against just pure zealot that's already been damaged by the uh, by the earlier vultures 
There you go. He's going to pick that off and take out this base in the top left. I can't believe it. Mind, is is he doing it right now? He's a full 30 supply ahead now of best. How is this happening? Looks like another drop going to come through here. He's going to try and deny this base once again. There's the big storms. Okay, that is really really rough for the Terran player he even loses a tank to the cannons here and a lot of these uh a lot of these guys are very very low oh he can hit the nexus he can actually hit the nexus here oh my god targets down one of the shuttles nicely done this tank if it sieges up it can kill this nexus target target the nexus okay he's not targeting it he targets the gate uh, targets the tank he gets the tank that tank going down is pretty large nexus does get picked off really good job there by mine using the last two goliaths in this army to just snipe that nexus <laughs> quite a game here boys quite the game indeed still got about seven dropships here and i guess one thing to mention is that mine has done a very very good job of just constantly picking off these shuttles over and over and over again throughout this game Whereas Best really hasn't been able to pick off any dropships. The dropships are constantly growing in number. And this has got to be like... I, I saw three dropships heading into the main there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven and three. So he's got ten dropships. That's a lot of supply I want to mention as well. That's... That's 20 supplies. So 20 of this 30 supply advantage is actually just pure dropship. So that's not a that's not the greatest supply in the world. A uh, bit of dead supply. A pretty good drop here from Best. He does lose one more shuttle, and he will clear this. But seven dropships are on their way to counter attack this uh, army here and clear. Looks like he's going to drop once again. Okay, dropping on some some mines, unfortunately. A couple more tanks do pop out. Zealot's going to clear most of this, and actually, Best is going to stop this base from going down. These two tanks kind of sacrificial here. Nice storm to finish things off. He will get that last tank and finish off the remainder of the SCVs. Another drop here. Oh, Templar Storm. Wasted there as mine kind of fakes the drop. Scan sees all those probes just returning their uh, cargo there. Looks like Terran still mining on one base, but both players at this point mining very, very little. You can see the back natural completely mined out. Natural for mine, mined out. Only one base here mining at the moment. And Best now has center left. He's got bottom right. I can't believe we haven't seen the seven or the six taken yet here by mine. He really needs to take one of these bases. Loading a ton of SCVs up in a drop and sending it onto this high ground. I don't know what those are going to do against storms. Seems like the worst possible thing against Storm's Gate. He's going to send those to work at the uh, mineral only here. Trying to run forward, trying to pick off some of these Templar, but losing all of his Goliaths and Vultures for the uh, privilege there. Really frustrating stuff for him. He's loading up again to get onto this high ground. More Storm's going to come up here right on top of those tanks. There it is. Double storm to finish that off. This is so frustrating, man. Mind, he's got to be bashing his head against the wall after this game just because of how frustrating this is. Going to send a ton of goliaths and tanks onto this high ground. The zealots actually can't engage here because of the tanks on low ground, but he's going to bring some more... Templar up here and GG is called finally mine does tap out All right, we saw a game that um, Looked like it could possibly go to mind could possibly go to the Terran. He gets a clapper I mean he tried he tried really hard. I felt like 
He was on the verge of kind of breaking best there for a little bit, but the cumbersome nature of Terran drops, just loading up drop after drop after drop, and your opponent, he's got like three shuttles, and he can beat seven drop ships. It's kind of insane. Um, storms are insanely good. Reavers are fantastic in drops as well. But, uh, oh man. Are we ever going to see a win with Terran? On 76, I just, I don't see it happening at this point. These Protoss players are too good at pressing that T button and clicking on the dropships. It's just so hard for Terran to make it work. Reavers landed at islands, man. They are incredibly difficult to break. So every single trade is going to be a negative. Every single trade is going to be putting the Terran player farther and farther behind. We didn't see carriers this game. Pretty grindy game overall. A lot of back and forth. Almost losing multiple bases. Actually did lose top left. Center left went down, but was still secured there by Bast. And I feel like mine probably could have played it out a little bit longer there. Take the seven and the six, man. Take the seven and the six, or at least one of those bases, put a bunch of turrets in there and just, you know, get that extra income, try to play it out in a long game. Unfortunately, mind, I think just way too frustrated at that point. You saw how many times he tried to drop that high ground and with overwhelming forces got knocked back by a small zealot Templar force. I think he's just like, Fuck this, I'm out, and just GG's immediately. Anyway, we're going to go into game number two, guys. Enough of my rambling, let's get it going. All right, best takes that win over Mind. A bit of a disappointment there. I do like to see Mind play in more of a normal math, um, especially since he, he doesn't get a lot of chances to play uh, here in the KCM, but... It is what it is. I think Royal and Light have both played quite a bit on 76 here in KCM. So maybe they were kicking the can down the road, getting the lower ranked player to go out first. It's probably the better strategy overall here as Terran. If you're planning to actually win this week of KCM, you don't want to send out Royal first on 76 like they did last week and uh allow him to get killed by you know a, a lesser protoss player he could probably beat on any standard map um just because 76 is so incredibly broken but um yeah i think that's probably the mindset here now we've got best versus Sulky. Let me be grabbing a hatch first versus gateway first. You all know how this goes. We've seen it a million times before. Looks like a drone out here. I don't know what this drone's for. Maybe just waiting for a probe. Okay. Um, afraid of maybe a cannon rush? I don't really know. He sees the timing on the probe there. Hmm. That's interesting. I, I don't understand here. Sulky wanting to keep this drone out. I guess this must be uh, a map with a lot of uh, cannon rush prevalence here. That's the only thing I can think of. The reason you would want to keep that drone off the line. Because in the early game, you can see there's really not many drones. There's only 13 drones on the field. So... 13 drones with one off the line. That's a pretty good percentage of your overall income. What is that? Like 9%, 8%, something like that? It's a lot. And um, he's going to be trying to take this third. The probe being super, super annoying here. Blocking over and over and over again. And eventually this zealot is going to arrive. Oh, he's going to get it down. Okay. Does get that down. Going to do a little damage with this drone. That's actually helping quite a lot here, I think. If he just harasses it with this drone over and over again, he can get most of the shields off of this zealot. That's going to help a lot. Oh, he loses the drone. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's not good. Okay, the opposite now of, uh, of helpful uh, with the killing of that drone. It's really, really painful now. 
And Sulky gonna go across the map with his first lings. He's gonna leave a few here to possibly try to pick off this zealot, but the rest are going across the map. Let's see what he can do with them. Hiding there between the mineral patches, super, super annoying. Sulky really wanted to get behind that and, and actually stop it, prevent it from getting behind the mineral patches there, but not able to do so. Nexus is up here. Did he skip the... No, he got the forge in the front. Not going directly into Cyber Core, not uh, being that greedy. We'll be throwing down a cannon here in a moment. So delaying that Cyber Core by a little bit. Not the biggest deal though. Oh, actually it's on the way. So Cyber Core before cannon. Looks like he's doing a couple more things before cannon as well, but may end up living to regret it. Hopefully he's got another Zealot about to pop out here with that third Zealot. It does help things out quite a bit. There's the cannon on the way and Stargate here as well. So everything looking nice for best. I think he's going to be feeling very, very comfortable here. His gateway first opener did really, really well. Slow, he slowed down that third base by quite a bit. He's got that Zealot there still. Hiding between the mineral patches is being super, super annoying. So really, really good job from him so far. And Solki here. What's he going to go? What's he going to do with this tech? He's got the lair. It's in pretty good time, but I think uh, if the Spire's not down by now, he's probably going to lose some serious overload. Okay, there's the Spire there in the natural. It looks to be uh, pretty close to completion. The size of that building. Uh, by the looking at the size alone, I'd say it's like 60%, although it's very, very hard to tell. It's funny, like, such a cool race Zerg is, but um, lacking in a lot of the uh, sort of design, the, 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 the depth of design that uh, a race like Terran has. Like, you know, Terran buildings, you can clearly see how far along the build progression is. As Terran is building a, a building, it gets closer and closer to looking more like that building. Zerg buildings, they, they just kind of look like a smaller growth and then a larger growth and then boom, they're done. Um, the other thing is, Every other race, Terran and Protoss, they have animations for their buildings when they're actually doing an upgrade. And Zerg just does not, so... Not a lot of love for the Zerg race in uh, in the blizzard of 1998. Kind of uh, making a very cool idea, but... Missing out on a few uh, design things. I, I I think that there was something in the mix. I've heard this before that they were like planning to add those things in. Oh, he sees the two Stargate. That's huge. That is huge to see that. He could go for a Hydra's bust here. Um, in the timing, yeah, he throws down the Hydra's stand immediately. Knowing that he's not going to be able to uh, take fights here uh, in the air. But I heard that they were doing some sort of... I uh, don't want to butcher this here, but... They were planning to... Attempt to add animations to the buildings of the Zerg to show when they were doing um, when they were doing upgrades but they just didn't have enough time they weren't able to uh, to get it done for the release and you know this game has never really been updated there's only like one or two updates I think they did uh, they changed the amount of money that costs to build a spawning pool uh, on uh, the release of uh, of brood war but that's pretty much it now here comes a big group of zealots the zealot timing here meant not really to kill but instead to kill a ton of overlords going after the overlords here as much as possible he's gonna lose one of these corsairs it looks like he does indeed lose that corsair he tried to pull it back away from the spore but didn't pull it back far enough the spore continued to target that one single uh, corsair and he loses one i think he picked off about three overlords there and a small handful of zealot uh, of zer 
Zerglings and Hydras went down as well. Zealots, of course, hemorrhaging in their numbers now, running around here looking for potential pickoffs, but nothing really to be found at this moment. And this is really the perfect way to defend and deal with uh, the double Corsair play. If you're just going to hang back, not try to go for a Hydralis bust, oh. you know that uh, Templars are going to be late here. So just sitting on top of your drone, sitting on top of your uh, production facilities there, hiding behind walls is perfect see look at this this would be terrible if there were templar coming up to your natural because those hydras don't have anywhere to move um storms would just ravage this army but as it stands with only zealots on the field and some corsairs in the air yeah that's that's perfect positioning you cannot break that and at this point soul key can just drone endlessly here with that many hydras the sport colony and the sunken colony look at that that as well Te templar with storm would ruin this it would kill all the drones and all the hydras with about two storms but because there's no storms on the field, because he went to Stargate, you can just sit there like that on top of your drones. You can use the drones to help you defend. There are the first few Templar now, so he will have to move out. So he going to get out on this map here very soon and look for that fourth base. Maybe try to deny a third from best as well. There is going to be a lack of Templar. You know, we didn't start building up that energy early on the templar are late so there are a few less templar here in this first fight we've only got three here they are building that energy but dragoons are now popping out we've got one one as well where are we at with the upgrades here for hydra oh one or one oh either way you want to slice it one attack, zero armor to 1-1. One, one. So not too bad. Only one upgrade behind here. Solki going to take his fourth. Third on the way now for best. Huge army coming across the map here. Pure Hydralis. We don't need lurkers at this moment. Because the Templar number is so low. Um, he sees the base coming down. Actually turns everything around. So... Maybe getting a good look at that army, he realizes he needs something more. Maybe he will indeed go into Lurker. There we go. Lurker eggs are morphing. So, yes. He's decided. Hydralis just not going to cut it here. We need to go into a longer game. We need to slow things down. Lurker up. And uh, fight the Protoss in a protracted game a long game with a lot more drones a lot more income a lot more production allowing best to take a third base here a necessary evil as sulky just cannot take this fight right now will be backing away towards that fourth base looks like a good position here on vermeer to take the high ground there just to the north of this location diving on a high templar that is a full energy high templar super high value target there sulky not able to get it has a couple of scourge here we'll see if he can connect with some observers to slow down this army best rotating around could try to come through the middle here, but since there's no lurkers in that location, it might be a really good idea. However, I think Best just wants to take a fourth base here. He's going to try and clear out that location. Make sure nothing's there. It looks like he's sending out a probe as well. Probe going to head over. Throw down that fourth nexus. Fourth base being saturated now for Solki. His uh, economy is becoming massive. Going into Hive as well. Tons of lurkers here, but not as many lurkers as you might expect. Mostly Hydras, really. And some Lings now being added on as well. This is a point where I personally struggle very, very hard in uh, Protoss versus Zerg. Is once you get to that fourth base and the economy is really rolling. 
macroing all of these hatcheries out it's it's very very tough and getting the right unit composition having your lurkers in the right place at the right time and teching and defending all of the things that protoss can do it's very very tough there's a lot going on but soul key with his 300 apm and his clear understanding of this game going to put on a master class of how to defend a massive protoss army here the fourth base on the way this is scary Protoss on 4 base can last for a very, very long time. They can pull out a ton of crazy moves. They can do storm drops. They can get into everything, everything you could possibly want here as the Protoss. You can absolutely get on 4 base. He's going to try and break this location. Oh my god, this is not a lot of lurkers here. He's going after the observers, though. He gets both of them. Both observers get picked off there. That is what you need to do absolutely perfect now i'm gonna get his hive has finished that uh the uh queen's nest was definitely finished for a long time there but uh not really on top of that now another observer gets picked off a few more storms going down here pretty good storms on a couple of those lurkers but yeah super annoying picking off that observer over and over again here comes hydras heading down to the center right and there's nothing here but a couple of cannons that's way too many hydras for those cannons to handle and he's probably gonna break this base meanwhile best is trying to get in here solki gonna break into that center right this is a really great move cancelled immediately fourth base is no longer on the table here best should have taken the base to the south if he's gonna push through the south might as well take the base to the south why would you like there's no reason to take center right in this position take the base behind your push here the the drag is breaking through though he's getting on top of this fourth base fourth base close to going down here zealots are inside but the hydras from that uh, kill on the center right have actually made their way around and are in a flanking position now archon doing so much splash damage killing a ton of drones there flank with these zealots but the, the uh, lurkers are doing a great job of cleaning that up can he actually focus down this hatchery Needs to kill both these hatcheries here if he wants to make this push a success. Actually not targeting right now. Only targeting with the uh, Archon. Oh no, both the hatcheries are going to survive. And that is not a good sign for Best. Best giving up his whole army, all the dragons, the complexity of his army now gone. And he gave up his uh, fourth base as well. That fourth base falling. Just icing on the cake here for Soul Key. Exactly what he wants to have happen. Um, keep your base alive and deny a base. It can't go better than that. Best now. Struggling here to uh, keep his uh, fourth base alive that reclaim base absolutely essential now as best is pretty much mined out of his his natural here his main of course mined out a while ago now a ton of dragons here a lot of storms it's all gonna come down to the storms here how did, do they land ling and lurker coming from the north side as well pretty good storms on some of these lurkers really needs to focus on taking down the hydras though hydras are the big problem here I just running forward storms pretty darn good once again Lur uh, dragons can definitely deal with this lurker army but now all the zealots are gone and cracklings are pouring forth no archons here to help deal with this the dragons are struggling couple of links three links going to work on this nexus might actually pick it off best just not reacting quickly enough and look at that nexus oh it wasn't being targeted oh he's gonna get it he got it oh man that was hilarious he almost uh didn't get that kill just because the links were not right clicked on the nexus but he notices in time brings the links back to finish it off and really really well done there plus one plus one is done for the links plus two plus one is done for the hydras 
I think we're gonna have we should have at least plus two plus two here for best best leaving his long distance mining probes alone here for a second to be ravaged now by the cracklings here over in center right best shoving forward with what he's managed to muster here and it is a decent army but no storms available right now okay wait where, where did that storm come from i don't know I don't see the Templar. There it is. It was hiding underneath the uh, bottom part of the of the map there. Coming in to this fourth base once again. The storm! Oh my god, that storm. Holy 12 kills on that Templar. And he actually breaks this base. Are you kidding me? Best actually fighting back relatively well right now. 24 kill Archon leading the charge right now. 12 kill Archon here staying alive, staying behind these links, really doing a great job microing these units, getting maximum value there. A Defiler pops out, but it's not going to be enough. Sulky, 63 supply. He's dropped so low in supply now. Oh, picking off a Templar here is massive. One Templar going down as it's crossing the map is huge some hydras here are gonna kite this army around but i think best can get in here and stop this other fourth or maybe go after this uh, production area three oh god diving in here trying to get some uh some templar here but the archon is formed the storms are thrown down the drones are forced to retreat and oh gosh he's not controlling here i'd love to pick off some of those templar I'm gonna go ahead and surround this archon looks like oh 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 get the templar get the templar oh nicely done For forces the templar to throw down their storms and kills them all however losing three hatches here absolutely brutal best is not mining almost at all at this point look at his income going up so incredibly slowly same can be said for sulky though although he does have this base in the bottom right this bottom or bottom left the bottom left base is so huge if he could just survive a little bit longer just hold on for a few more minutes he can get this economy rolling and uh, produce some more units here with which to hold this off. He's going to jump on top of some of these Templar. Oh, God. Another Archon here. He got to dive on top of that morphing Archon and finish that off. Lurkers here behind the wall. Really, really tough to break through with just Zealot and uh, Archon here. Lurker's going to run away. Lurker's backing off away from the Zealots and Archons. I think that Bess is going to go ahead and take this bait here at the top, uh, at the 12 o'clock. He's going to send all his units up. Oh, man. More Templar crossing the map get picked off. So, so big. Getting those Templar right now. Those Templar are insanely important. And almost not mind Bess just like making Archons at this point and sending them across the map instead of making Templar because Archons are so powerful in these low numbers. They're incredibly, incredibly good against the Cracklings. And now he spotted it. Best knows. He killed the 12. And he knows now that there is a base down here in the bottom left. Here comes a uh, Defiler here. A storm down on this uh, Lurker. Another great storm there on that lurker there as well. He surrounds and kills all the lurkers. Big plague on every single zealot in this location, but there's hardly anything here. He's going to make a ton of sunkins to try and hold on. It's really, really tough situation here for Solki. The links go in. Everything going to die immediately. Solki, he's sending down links and lurkers, but the drones here are going to be dived upon by these Archons killing them all. Every single drone gonna go down. 42 supply to 124. I think Best has done it, man. He's not mining hardly at all at this point. I'd love to see his mineral patches. I don't think he's got even a single mineral patch. 
uh, at the main or natural anymore. Maybe one or two uh, at the third base here. But just barely enough gas to continuously make Templar and continuously pump those Archon Zealots. Oh god, this is so close, man. It's gonna make a few more lurkers. He's trying to hold this base in the center left. This is the last hope here of Solki. Solki, he has to keep this alive. This is this is it. This is everything. He's gonna go after the two. Oh my god, he gets both. He gets both. Both of the observers go down here. Another observer is coming up, but it is spotted. He knows it's here. He knows it's here. He's gotta send some. He's gotta send the uh, scourge this direction. Oh my god, no, he doesn't intercept that. The interception was not there. Archon Zealot gonna bust through this area. And Soul Key is going to go down. You can see his supply dropping below 25. GG. Soul Key taps out. Best takes an epic game. Wow. Wow, I really thought Soul Key was doing fantastically there. But best getting such value out of some of those Templar, those Archons. Wow, a, a, a great game, guys. I am speechless after that one. Really a fantastic, fantastic PVZ and best gets two kills. Best? Is this one of those weeks? Is this one of those best weeks when he's just able to go on an absolute spree when he's on fire? He is really on fire. And this looks to be one of those weeks. Soul Key goes down. It's either Royal or Light coming up next. That's going to be game number three. All right, we are back after a quick break. We've got Royal versus Best now. We're all here in the top center, best in the bottom right. Just took a little breather after that last game. Quite a intense back and forth there. Holy. I was on the edge of my seat right to the end there. I was not sure who was going to win until that uh, bottom left hand base got broken. That was, that was the moment there, I think, that best really took control. Um, and uh, prevented Solki from recovering. Um, and so, yeah, I took a little break. I uh, had myself a, a, a Mandarin Orange. Damn, they're so good, man. They're so, so good. But one thing I'll say about oranges in Japan, they are like 10 times better. It is crazy. Mikang, it's called in Japan. And just as a kind of a uh, e explanation as to why or more of a uh, proof positive. I was a teacher there. And when I would ask kids, like, what's your favorite food? What's your favorite fruit? I would say like 50% of them would say Mikang. 50% of kids like orange. I don't think that's true in uh, in Canada or America. How many kids would say that orange is their favorite food? But in Japan, it is, it is like a good 50%. So those are really, really good fruits over there. Um, I used to eat them all the time and uh, looking forward to eating them again in the future. Now we've got a factory first here for Royal. It's going to be a, a single factory expand, I imagine. Single Zealot heading across the map. He sees it. Royal has that supply depot down on the right side of his barrack. So he does have a location here to quickly maneuver away from that Zealot and uh, continue to deal damage. He's going to produce a second Marine here as well. And a third. And he should be able to push this away and protect his factory. Really like this positioning here. If you are a Terran player um, playing TVP on this map, look at how beautifully organized the base is here for Royal right now. He's got that perfect little location for controlling his Marines against Zealots. And the factory is so close to that spot 
that there's really no way um, for the Zelts to prevent that factory from finishing now. He can run between here. Oh, actually, I don't think he can go through this little spot between the uh, barracks and the factory. So does lose a couple of Marines. Almost going to lose the third, but no really great micro there. Picks that off. Oh, he loses one to the probe. That probe just vicious. Chasing down the uh, the marine there. Whenever I see the probe zapping something to death, I always think of R2D2, the little droid with the with the little uh, um, taser that comes out of the front <laughs> of his body and just bzz, zaps the thing and the marine just explodes into a bag of blood. <laughs> oh man. Looks like a command center on the way here. And a Nexus slightly later, just gonna come down now. Everything pretty well even at this point. Single Dragoon can't allow this Vulture in. Oh, it's gonna block with the probe. Does allow himself another shot onto uh, that uh, Vulture, but he should be able to get a probe or two here. One. No, just two probes overall. So good job by Roll, but an excellent defense by Best as well. Another Dragoon across the map right here. Robo on the way. And of course, range coming up now. But Royal has that uh, machine shop and the tank out, so he's not going to take any damage. Not going to take any damage on that bunker. Going to be nice and safe here. And it looks like he's getting an armory as well. So armory on the way. We're going to have the first upgrade coming here. We'll see if Royal wants to play a big old macro game here. Upgrade Terran style against Best in this case. Or does he want to hit some sort of timing now? I feel like Royal's style, he's definitely more of a... Oh, three shots on this tank. Nicely done. Surrounds with the SCVs. Gets the repair there. Second tank is out, so all of those dragons would have died without taking out that tank best smartly, backing away. I feel like Rush is... Or, excuse me, Royal Style. Definitely more of a player who likes to get into four base before doing any sort of attack. Get up to 2-1 or 3-2 very comfortably defend everything and uh, eventually push out with a maxed army that's just more of his his way of playing this matchup and i think we may end up seeing it this game as well he is coming out to put on that pressure best does have to back away some of his dragoons are very very low for example that one dragoon in the yellow hp three tank shots should be able to kill that in one hit so he does need to be very careful with those units Royal, uh, likewise, not going to go too far out here. If there were a couple of dragons being rallied up um, and suddenly the army turns and six dragoons jump on top of those tanks, you could be in a lot of trouble. So he does back away. Gonna hang out here, just continuously producing tanks right now. So when you see this amount of tanks being produced, you can be fairly certain that it's going to be a third base coming very shortly. Third base should be getting thrown down here relatively soon. We'll have a explosion of factories as well, and then the third base should be coming out here. A couple of zealots being loaded up. I think he's got a reaver in there as well. Third base on the way. Starport coming up here. Starport in good time. Should be able to get the science facility here in time to get the plus two started right away. No turrets as of yet. Zero turrets in the natural. Do we have any turrets in the main? No. But we've got two Goliaths, so immediately pushing this away. Nicely done. Best coming in on that angle. Royal right there to meet him. And move around a little bit here. Shuttle looking for that location. Undefended point where he can drop off that Reaver. Nice targeting on the Reaver. Kill or gets rid of the shields immediately. Not going to lose that Goliath either. Nicely done. And uh, 
Royal just defending everything perfectly. No turrets built, guys. Zero. Um, that's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. If you're able to avoid building any turrets here, you are in, in such a good position. You're going to have a much faster expansion. You're going to have much faster factories. Um, you know, this map is very wide open. There's, a, especially the main base, a plenty of locations to fly in from. So... Building a secure turret ring around this base is tough. It's very tough. Um, you have to put down like, I would say like five, six turrets at least to, to, to surround this base. So, um, just relying on Goliaths here is massive. It's really, really good. Uh, he hasn't had to build that uh, engineering bay as of yet. I think he's going to be throwing it down here shortly. Um, definitely, you don't want to. Uh, not get that at all but um delaying it by quite a bit and defending perfectly it's it's a great spot here for royal and tank coming down some guys are prepared uh if he sees that blur he could definitely scan and kill that off turrets are now coming down and yeah this is what i was saying just delaying the turrets a bit Getting the the uh, command center faster, getting the factory explosion faster. Oh god! Right on top of that tank. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, that last game hurt my voice a little bit more than I expected. Um, picks off one tank and a turret there. Not too bad. But uh, a fresh shirt gonna come up. And a big army coming up towards the natural here. He's ready for this push out. The moment that uh, Royal attempts to move forward, he is gonna be met with quite a bit of uh, Reaver and the Dragoon fire here. When he's sieging up, the Goliath range, of course, is done. So you gotta be very careful with these shuttles. He's going for it, though. Here we go. Target down the shuttles. Target down the shuttles. There we go. First shuttle goes down really, really quick. Second shuttle goes down. No, it does survive. Second shuttle does survive, but the Reavers get picked off here. And the Dragoons running in piecemeal into these tanks. Not gonna be the best trade in the world <laughs> tanks are going to be able to now push forward and royal should easily take his third base nicely done i think the targeting there from the goliaths was absolutely perfect and um best throws away a lot there for very little he does trade out a few tanks but he doesn't slow down this command center by much now the base out here in the front is a very low yield base it does not have much uh income there it does not have a whole lot of um minerals in those patches not much uh gas in that geyser either i think i saw very recently that there are only 1500 there, there's only 1500 gas in that gas geyser so a an extremely low amount of gas does not last for very long uh, but will be a nice base here from which Royal should be able to project power out onto the map, possibly snagging the bases in the center right or uh, over onto the left side. Um, that's also a reasonable direction to push as well. Although I think probably the best way to play this out here as Royal after taking the third base, yeah, you try to take this base over here and power up until you're ready to, to attack and then head directly south, directly south towards the natural and take three o'clock at the same time. This is a StarCraft II mentality, a StarCraft II strategy, but... Um, it definitely works. It makes sense. When you're doing a dedicated push, when you're uh, trying to shove the Protoss, taking a base behind where you are pushing is absolutely a fantastic idea. 
it, it's like your push is also defending your base as well and it's almost impossible for the protoss to to counter attack that in that in that position so uh, we'll see if roll decides to uh, take that advice if he goes with that strategy or he wants to uh, spread out and try to take bo uh, bottom left because that is another main base uh if you allow the protoss player to take that uh, half the map or that the third of the map excuse me uh, that can that can lead to a lot of trouble. There can be a lot of gateways thrown down in that base over there, and it looks like Bez is preparing to do so. Got some pylons over in that location. Could start to throw down some gateways there. And uh, set up production in a secondary location with which he can surround and kill Royal's army now. Coming forward with a lot of vultures here. This is so many vultures just completely overwhelming. These small numbers of gateway units look like this one last mine. Gotta connect. Picks off those three Dragoons. A nice trade there for Royal. And now he's going to push forward here. Take a uh, front position. But he's not planning on attacking just yet. You can see he's setting up turrets here. He's just going to spread himself out. And uh, have a nice wide front here uh, to defend. So he can easily take that base in the center right that uh, th this mineral only base here at this location um four shuttles is a lot four shuttles you can definitely get in here into the main base and do a ton of damage now royal with that forward position not going to be as easy for him to come back to the main to defend so uh, this could deal a lot of damage here comes the zealots into the main that's quite a few zealots oh really good no no he didn't target the Templar. I thought he was targeting the Templar. A lot of SCVs go down there to that storm. Another Templar drop. Oh, the storm's not nearly as good here, but uh, still did quite a bit of damage um, to some of those SCVs. I think he picked off about three or four with that second storm. Maybe five or six with that first storm, so not the worst. Definitely slowing things down a little bit, but that was four shuttles, guys. All of them died. All the units inside died. And I think there was four Templars in there as well. So that's uh, that's a lot of pain. That's a lot of uh, that's a lot of units there to throw away into the main base as Royal is reaching his uh, his max supply here, 176 already, and growing rapidly here. Two two is done. Um, th plus three should be on the way here soon. But his army is looking very scary. Ooh, three tanks get killed to a mine drag there. That was not what Royal wanted to see. Looks like these mines doing a great job of uh, picking off a ton of zealots, though. Zealots going down en masse here as they try to break this location. Now it's just pure Dragoon. He cannot push this spot. Just has to fall back here. And Royal holds on nicely. So not the best engages from best uh, here in the mid game. Um, Royal kind of taking the better of these trades, uh, although he is being slowed, da slowed down a little bit. I think that his position is getting better and better here as we go on. Best now starting to put some gateways down there in the bottom or in, in the center left that the uh, other main bay is the third main. 3-2 is done. And I think this is about the time. 170 supply for Royal. He's adding on another command center. Looks like he actually wants to go towards the left. So it is probably going to be at that... Uh, the way that I was uh, saying was uh, was not going to be good here. Going, uh, stretching out towards that other uh, main base. And we've got some uh, zealots being dropped here. He's trying to break this location. A lot of the SUVs have been pulled. He needs to pull these SUVs. Whoa, whoa, whoa. SUVs. Oh, Templar going for some storms. These tanks are very, very stacked up. So storms on those tanks would be absolutely insane. We do have a science vessel out here. Does he have EMP now? Not 100% sure. This command center looks like it's ready to float towards that high ground base just outside of the main base. Looking for some storm kills. Wraith here, though, going to push that shuttle away. Terran back down to 150 supply again. So Bess is keeping him a little bit slowed down here. It's just keeping him back and uh, continuing to expand. And that's really the way you want to play this out as the Protoss player. Keep on slowing down the Terran player. 
keep him on the back foot and take the remainder of the map take as much of the map as possible make a ton of gateways in other locations have an insane macro engine so when the push finally does come and it looks like it's about to come oh my god the tanks just annihilating these dragoons big mistakes here from best not having zealots in the front but the drops here and the storms are fantastic zealots gonna come forward and clean up a lot of this zealot dragoon just kind of running up the right hand side here i don't know where that's going oh the mines oh god the mines Oh, oh, so painful. These zealots just run a right click up to the top right hand corner. Are going to get completely wiped out here by just a few vultures. So that was not a good move by Bess. Uh, I don't know. Bess, he seems to fall apart in a lot of uh, in a lot of ways in the uh, mid and late game. And especially in the late game when he needs to take engages with these uh, big Terran armies. Something's missing there. Something uh, critical. Something crucial is missing. He's really landing a lot of good storms. He's doing some good work with his dropships, but the the vault the, the zealot dragoon movement hasn't been the best. Some of these right clicks, uh, some of these moves through mines are costing him big time and giving Royal an advantage here with which to push forward. And eventually possibly close this game here. He's got the base in the top left. That's a very counter-attackable base. Any units that are popping out for best in the left-hand side of the map could run up here and deny this location. But so far, best doesn't know about that. Um, Royal kind of spreading out in the middle. I, I, I don't know about this. This is interesting. He's really spreading out and playing this like a Terran versus Terran. Taking the middle of the map in a wide arc and just trying to, you know, hold the majority of the map, it looks like. You know, if he's holding this middle area, uh, he should be able to get the base over here at the center right. He should be able to get uh, a prevent bases from going down uh, in these front locations. Uh, these low yield bases are not going to be able to be taken here by best, but generally we see Terran players go for more of a direct attack towards the natural. Um, nice storm there. Stopping these vultures from just easily breaking through. Uh, Tank's going to siege up on this side, and he's going to start to break uh, bottom left. That uh, third main base. Another big drop coming through. Three shuttles, but oh my god, so many turrets. So many turrets here. This is brutal. Looks like the Templar won't be able to make it over here in order to storm these uh, retreating SCVs. And Royal cleans that easily. Oh, man. I think that Best really could have used those four shuttles uh, for this... The, the defense of this base over here that would have been much more useful. A couple of cannons. Really, really nice. Just going to deal with these two. Goliaths picks them both off. Moment of... Um, moment of miscontrol there for Royal, but it's fine. He's still got a massive army. 184 supply. Definitely enough to continue to push forward with. And he could definitely take the base in the center right now uh, without much issue. But he's actually taking another base over there uh, at the mineral only. Um, over in the top left-hand corner instead, interestingly enough. As he uh, continues to hold this line here, the center line, the center area. Uh, it's a very, very wide area. A lot of uh, space for best to try and break through, but also a lot of mines set up in the front and a wide spread of tanks uh, with plenty behind that as well. Turrets here additionally, just backing those up. Royal is in commanding position now. Should be able to take this game without too much worry. Best is sending another group of Protoss around the right-hand side, but he's going to eat insane mines. So many mines end up getting hit. He t eats an EMP as well. Big shuttle drop over here. This is beautiful. This is what Best needs to do right now. Getting over here and denying this base is massive. 
Getting rid of this base as well. Huge, huge moves here from Bass. This is Pure Zealot though, so Pure Zealot will be cleaned up pretty reasonably uh, by just a few vultures being sent in this direction. Um, so, not the best. He needed some Templar in there. He probably needed a few Dragoons as well, but uh, doesn't bring any of those along, so the the command center can just lift and roll his SCVs mostly ran away. He's still at 192 supply and look at Bess. He's very low on the supply. Big storms. Oh my God, the storms. Dealing massive damage there. Killing off a lot of those SCVs. Dealing some damage to those tanks as well. But Royal unfazed. Back to mining once again. Playing like the absolute beast that he is. Back to 200 supply as well. Still holding this middle area. And Bez struggling to macro out an army here that can actually take on this heavily, heavily upgraded mech force. I, I don't know what kind of hope he has left here. He needs the storms of a lifetime in order to break through here. Royal with that mobile army. Moving around the map. This is something I've talked about before. High level Terran players do so, so well. Looks like dropping some zealots into the minefield and he's pulling the trigger on the full on attack. Bringing forward a ton of zealots here. The storms are amazing. Oh my God, the storms. Holy crap, some amazing, amazing storms here. But the dragoons numbers are starting to run thin. Only a few dragons left over here. Storms have been taken out as well. High Templar will be removed. And actually, best broke through that reasonably well. I like the move. Sending the uh, shuttles with zealots forward first and doing that moving drop as you cover the minefield to just bring in like 10, 20 mines onto a single zealot or two. And just get rid of as many of those as possible before the actual engage happens, before the zealots have to run forward. Now, dropping some more good storms here, kill, killing a bunch of tanks. This is a kind of a scrappy situation right now where the Protoss army can really shine. Needs to uh, kill off these two tanks on the right-hand side. He's killing off some tanks with the Dragoons, pure Dragoon army. Zealots are being rallied forward. He's going to go up onto this high ground, looks like. Try to stop the mining here once again. Royal's starting to uh, fall apart a little bit. He's only at 128 supply. He's getting some more tanks over to this location. He needs to save the space. More storms going to come down here. Massive, massive storms. Nice D matrix to keep some of these tanks alive, but the Zealots right on top of them should be able to deny them. More tanks coming up here, but they will be picked off. And uh, another round of tanks going to come up here. Wow, Royal just hanging on brilliantly. Keeping himself alive here. The Dragoon in the back. Super, super annoying. More Zealots coming up. Another round coming forward here. Not enough Vultures to hold on. And Storms are going to be amazing against these units. Oh, man. Archon making it over here. He's going to get so many kills as well. Royal. It looked like he had this one, man. It really looked like he did, but a brilliant breakthrough from Best and just in the chaos of uh, of the aftermath of that uh, attack, able to take good trades against these small numbers of mech units, eventually he may be able to actually break through. Kill off this base in the center left, and it looks like... We're all going to switch it up and take the base in the center right now. So this game is not over by any means, but Bess definitely on the attack. He's definitely on the offensive here, which is where you want to be. Um, against a max, uh, a, a, a mecking Terran player, you want to be in their face, constantly taking good trades with them, constantly lowering that tank count because it's when it gets really scary is when you've got that max supply with the maxed out uh, Terran army uh, on upgrades. It's just so hard to counter, so hard to deal with. Storms from the high ground dealing ma really, really good damage here. Tank sieges up, but gets totally killed off. Immediately crushed. 
Archons here on the high ground. Just going to be picking off SCVs here. Looks like he's actually going to make his way down. Try to kill that tank, funnily enough. Not being controlled here. Will end up losing both those Archons without killing too many SCVs. And, oh my god. A complete reverse, actually. Royal now has center right. And he manages to maintain these top left bases. That is crazy. Absolutely crazy. How many factors is he on? He just barely managed to hold all that. Even with Best constantly rallying forward. Even with Best constantly storming everything uh, around all the, all the time here. He still managed... To get those bases up and running once again. Best trying to push forward here. He's throwing down a lot of great storms, but the number of units is just. It's a numbers game at this point. There's way too much for Royal, who's actually 50 supply ahead now of Best. Just a crazy back and forth here. Crazy, crazy reversal from Royal and Best. I thought. With the breaking of that middle area and Best getting up into the top left, he was actually going to be able to win this one. But now Royal, he sets himself back up. Oh my god. Huge storm. Oh, 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 oh man. Now that's a storm. Seven kills. Now Archon going to come up here shortly. Being surrounded by a group of SCVs. That's not something you see every day. SCV is going to kill an Archon as is morphing. Adds on a few more turrets here. Another storm drop came through. GG. Best taps out. Not able to do enough with those storms. Not able to keep Royal off of those additional bases in the top left. Gets the clapper. Royal takes that game and ends best spree. But that was a close one, guys. That was insanely close. And I'm so glad we're having some nice uh, contested games here in KCM this week. Three very, very close games in a row. Love to see it. And I love to. I would love to see more of it as we go on to our next game. It's going to be Royal versus either Soma or Queen. That's coming up next. Okay, moving right along here. We've got Royal versus Soma. Soma up here in the top right hand corner. Royal in the bottom left. This is, of course, Blue Storm. Quite a ancient map, I would say. Been around for a very, very long time. We've seen a ton of great games here. Not my favorite map. I think the third base for Zerg is just way too far away. Makes it really, really hard to hold on against uh, certain attacks, vultures, and stuff like that. Yeah, you gotta take your base way down in the bottom right-hand corner if you're Soma here. In order to get a third gas. And then the fourth gas would be like right next to the Terran's main or up at the top center. Both of which are very hard to take and hold. But uh, we have seen some really great games here. I don't know if I remember any amazing Terran versus Zerg games on this map, but definitely some great Protoss versus Terran games. Uh, specifically, I have a video on my channel, Classic Cast, with Flash versus Jengbi here that was really great. But yeah, not my favorite map. Is a classic map though, and it is being brought back here. Just like Heartbreak Ridge. Heartbreak Ridge was brought back to the ASL kind of surprisingly to me. That's another one of those maps that I have a love-hate relationship with. And um, mostly, mostly hate relationship with, but it is a map. It is a classic map. It's been around for a super long time, like 2009 or something like that was when Heartbreak Ridge came out. So it's been around forever. Um, and I guess KCM wanted to follow that trend. He brings back Blue Storm. Oh, that moving shot was insane. I can't believe he almost killed that drone there. Moving shot's so hard to do with an SCV. He's going to start a bunker here, but Ling's already out, and this will be stopped. So cancel will have to occur. Pretty good use of that little tight nook there, but the SCV wasn't able to get ahead of these 
Lings. And so he will break through. He will kill the Marines here. Good control by Soma. Good control by Royal as well. But in the end, one Ling shall remain here. Oh, oh. And one Marine. In the middle of the map, not much going here for Royal's attack, but he will fall back onto a command center and he should be fine. Three SCVs not mining here. Uh-oh, slipping a little bit in the macro. How long is that going to be the case? It seems like he might not be able to see those SCVs down there. I think he might have fixed it by now, but you see his screen? No. <gasps> Oh my god, three SCVs doing nothing here, and you can see uh, Royal Screen jumping back and forth between the main and natural. He is looking at his mineral patches, but he's not spotting these SCVs. Okay, finally sees it, I believe. I think we just saw him lower his screen there and see those SCVs not working, so that's an important moment there. Royal needs to get his boys back to work. Is supply blocked at this moment, but it's fine. He's got a command center about to finish up here. We'll be transferring SCVs and a third hatch. So three hatch build here from Soma. Definitely out of character, I feel. Uh, Soma much more of a two hatch player. Um, historically, he has been exclusively a two hatch player in some cases uh, in, uh, in certain tournaments and that. But uh, pulling out the three hatch here. Going for a less aggressive style, he's going to have a lot more larva to work with, so much heavier on the macro side of things, but how will he fare without that early Medalisk uh, attack? How will he fare here when Royal has sufficient time to prepare for those Medalisks? That's plenty of links coming across the map here. Soma already utilizing the fact that he's going to have those extra larva. Not making as many drones in the early game. Going to make it a big batch of lings here. He can drone up a little bit later as the mutas are coming out. Tries to get some damage here with these lings, but not really finding anything. Looks like the SCV will get in and seize absolutely everything. A fantastic scout here from Royal. And that means that, you know what? Even though he's got this academy, even though he would generally be throwing down his comm sets at this time, doesn't have to. He's not going to. Just going to continue to build SCVs here. Uh, I think you lose, what is it, two SCVs uh, worth of production uh, every time you build a, com uh, a comm set? I think that's correct. Plus, it costs 50 uh, minerals, 50 gas, so 100 resources. That's a great corner to cut here now that he's seen everything. He can just continue, yeah, like I said, just build a ton more SCVs. And no need for scans here. No fear of lurkers. Royal is going to be hitting his... Uh, pr the timing here on that... Um, on those turrets as well as he saw the timing of the spire right when it uh, finished so he knows exactly when these mutas are going to arrive and it looks like not too many mutas produced by soma does he throw down a pytalus den here does he transition only three four mutas coming in so uh, really not too many right off the bat uh, when the uh, spiral is finished. There we go. Some more joining here. And actually the trickle of Mutalis continues to, to pour across this map. So he will be uh, putting on some good pressure here. That supply depot bouncing the glaives is very, very annoying. He's almost going to lose that. He already lost the SCV there. And he just guns it down himself, shoots it. A little bit of frustration there from Royal just shooting his own supply depot there um, just to get rid of it and stop the glaives from bouncing. It's like pretty good control here from Soma. It's very, very hard to do this bouncing back and forth while macroing back at home at the same time, but he's doing an excellent job. A little bit of lag there. I don't know what that was, but we're diving in now on the Marines and Medics. A ton of Lings getting in here. Diving right on top of this, and he's going to uh, crush this uh, turret here at the bottom as well. He should be able to slow down the uh, starport. He's going to keep these Marines away from the main base. Kill one more turret, and he should be able to take control of these barracks as well. This is probably going to be GG. Soma just running through 
royal here like he's nothing. Why doesn't he use three hatch build more often? He seems so, so good with it. GG Royal taps out and Soma takes an easy victory, making it look like uh, meaningless, so easy to take down Royal here, but definitely quite the feat. Anyway, guys, we're going to jump into our next game there. Royal has been eliminated. Soma is going to go up against Snow or YSC. Let's see who they send out next. Okay, our next game on Dark Origin here, Soma versus YSC. A shock to see Royal go out like that. I never expect him to go down that easily. Um, he's really so such such a solid player when it comes to holding on against Mutilus harassment. He almost never dies just straight up to the first few uh, few groups of mutas. Um, I don't know if Soma even got to 11 there, but he definitely didn't have an upgrade or anything like that. Just solid control and bringing in the links at the perfect time to surround and kill those marines. Looks like a nine pool here from Soma in this next game crazy stuff here is he gonna go for the gas as well um he's probably gonna at least get the gas and then cancel it is that gonna be a cancel yes it is to get the 10th drone that 10th drone will probably just be out for the scout no he's gonna keep it here at home oh no he's actually building it in the egg right now okay he's probably gonna send that out to scout find out where what his opponent is doing no he's gonna send it to mine okay um i just thought he was definitely gonna do it because uh usually he would do that but i guess on four base or on a four player map that's more common on a two player map you already know where your opponent is you're just going to send the links across the map anyway. But um, he will be producing four links here. Let's see if he gets the sixth as well, or the, the, the third set. I think that uh, YSC is going to be fine here. He even makes the uh, pylon just to slow things down. You know that Soma is going to have to stop and kill that. Although Soma is heading towards the third base. I think he's just going to take this third here. And with the third, you don't actually have to kill the pylon. You can just ignore it. Head straight across the map. That cannon, halfway done. This is a long map, though. Dark Origin, very, very long. That's quite the rush distance. So I think YSC may have uh, timed it out here just perfectly. Oh, man. No, no, he did not. Go, 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 go. Okay. I'm really shocked that Soma didn't just go forward there. But uh, he hangs back. And uh, YSC gets the gateway and the cannon finishes. So he's going to be fine. I guess he was expecting maybe the the gateway to be thrown down. But you might as well run forward and see if you can get on top of that. I, I'm a little bit shocked by that. Could have been an easy win there, possibly. Not that YSC is incapable of holding that off, but, um, you know, if he didn't have the money at that exact moment to throw down the gateway, he might have just been screwed. He might have not been able to hold on there. So, oh, he's coming into the natural. Kills the probe, runs by, gets three links into the main. Nicely done. And maybe this was Soma's goal all along, just to get the links in. He didn't really want to kill the cannon. Just get in here and do as much damage as he can. There we go. Gets the probe coming out of the gas. Lone probe, always a good target. Ooh, pretty good control here by YSC, but Soma, likewise, able to pull away with some of that good control. Could go after the pylon here. Could go after gas probes once again. Gas probes, always a good choice. Picking off these gas probes means that uh, YSC is just not going to have the money to uh, build his starport when he really wants to. Stargate, excuse me, when he really wants to get it. He should have... If he hadn't been harassed, he would have had the gas already to throw down that Stargate. But as it stands, only 80 gas in the bank. He needs 150. So his minerals are floating here. 
things are going a little bit wrong. And zealot, a single zealot getting into the main here, though. Links are on the way. There's four links now. I think YSC making a big mistake. Not going after the drones right away here. And also not tucking the zealot behind anything. Very frustrating stuff. There's the 150 gas finally, but you can just see how long that was actually delayed. Very, very long time there. And now this Corsair is going to be super, super late. And um, we may end up seeing a uh, Hydralis bust, although the Zealot did get into the main. He saw the Hydralis den, so he is going to be prepared. Still keeping this Ling alive in the main base. This control from Soma, what we come to expect from him, of course. The moment that I say that, the Ling goes down. Caster's curse, guys. It's, it is shocking how often that happens. <laughs> Absolutely shocking. So, uh, <laughs> we've got a second cannon coming up here. He knows the Hydra Den is complete, so he definitely needs some cannons. That positioning on the uh, forge a little bit rough here that forge is pretty far forward he makes a second forge in the main okay so he knows he knows that forge is dead no matter what meanwhile soma building an extra hatch here so focusing on that macro more and more drones popping out and no hydras pouring across the map so that's uh that's great for soma i mean he built this Hydra Den. He can start to get the upgrades. Uh, he can use it to defend his overlords. And he doesn't have to attack. But YSC had to build those cannons. So this is a great spot for Soma to be in. He's going right up into lair. He should be able to keep his overlords alive for the most part. Looks like one taking a little bit of damage, but doing a good job keeping that alive. Some Hydra's coming out here now, so the threat is real. He does have to build cannons. He's got three. Maybe he needs even more, though. Depending on the number of Hydra popping out at this point. He sees the lair, so he's probably not too scared. Probably not too scared of this Hydra's bust. And another hatchery there as well. So, yeah, he's. He, I think he's going to be looking at this like, time to get gateways. We're not worried about a Hydra bust anymore. We need to get our Zealot speed out. And we need to get our Templar as soon as possible. Evolution Chamber on the way here. Soma getting everything ready for a nice late game play. It's quite a few Hydras, and the Zealots I don't think have speed yet. This is still a scary moment here for YSC, so he's adding on a couple more cannons. But I really don't think this is going to be a bus play from Soma. The, all, the, all the signs point to a macro game here. The drone numbers... The number of hatches. Oh, he cancelled them both. Okay, so both were cancelled. And he's going to be adding on a ton more gateways here in a second. Only four in the main so far, but he needs to go up to about eight before doing any sort of push out. Look at that drone count in the third base. So many drones here, but no third gas. So I doubt that we have Lurker Aspect finished yet. Oh, could have gotten a free Corsair there. Not actually targeting that down, though. Spire on the way. I think this is the moment when Soma goes for a small group of mutas. Maybe six to eight mutas. They start to pick off some Templar. Before any sort of engage. It's still very, very hard on the gas, though. He is going to go ahead and get that third gas now. If you went mutas, it's very hard to produce mutas and hydras on just two gas. You really can't. He really can't afford it, so he is going to get that third gas now. Upgrades are on the way here. Upgrade done for YSC. Sixth hatch is being prepared here. Soma, six hatch Hydra seems to be the play. I don't know if he goes uh, Mita now at this point. If he's got six hatches, I think just Hydra play is probably going to be the, uh, the course of action here. Soma going to take a fourth base now. Nine minutes in. Lots of confidence here out of our Zerg player just grabbing that base right away. He's going to have to hold this first push. Two more hatches here. Wow. So hatch number seven and eight. 
going down at that third base. He is very, very serious, I think, about holding this, uh, this area because if you put down two hatches here and they both end up getting picked off, that is a massive investment and a ton of production facilities that will be going down for the Zerg. Overlord almost gets taken out. I think that Corsair just about got his first kill, but uh, died valiantly in the act. Now, a lot of Hydra popping out here for Soma. But can he get the good surface area when YSC finally comes out? He's building more cannons in his main. Actually, he thinks that there may be Mutas coming. Soma, however, just building Hydra. Only Hydra. Hydra, Hydra, Hydra all day. This man is going to have an insane supply here very very soon already at 100 and i think that'll be jumping up to like 140 150 very very quickly here um unless we come to a head now uh with ysc trying to come across this bridge he's gonna looks like take a third base there's lurkers okay so lurker on mass now the fourth base is up immediately gonna grab that gas as well so he's going to be switching into queen's nest wow okay right up into a hive here and this is going to be a hard game for ysc man a very very tough game because he really hasn't done much damage to soma and soma has not been uh taking his time lightly man he has been really powering throughout this game not really adding on any defensive structures you can see no sunken he doesn't really have great sim city at his natural either because he hasn't thrown down any buildings there instead he has just been powering like an absolute madman building so many drones so many hatches and getting all the upgrades imaginable now this army from YSC, it is going to move around the left side. And this is where things can get a little bit scary. If he makes it over here and grabs his fourth base, Soma has to fight from low ground here. Hold the uh, Protoss player up on this high ground. And also, Protoss can move around this side. They can move along the left-hand side of the map and even get down to get that fifth base. It would be much, much better for Soma had he actually gotten uh, lurkers onto that high ground and clogged up that left corridor. Coming from the third base of the Protoss, if he could uh, keep him from moving through that area, then he would prevent the fourth base and he would have a much better position for the contain. But now, Soma's containing YSC on all the bases he'll ever need, basically. So that's... um. That's not the best situation to be in here for uh, Soma. He's splitting the map right now. He's allowing YSC to take whatever he wants, half of the map, and uh, do what whatever he wants with it. Uh, cannon it up, get a ton of Templar and Dragoons on that high ground, and just power up into an insane late game Protoss army. He's even going to move, you can see, along that leftmost corridor could try to get down there and take that fifth base i i don't know if he's going to be ballsy enough to do that looks like soma's already done that on his side of the map um it looks like he is man he is taking the the dragoons down here with some templar as well and maybe he wants to get down here and snag a base he won't be able to make it through this area it seems like there's a very wide spread of lurkers over on this side of the map um at the bottom of this ramp you're never gonna go down here as ysc but i don't think you really have to i don't think it's necessary getting a uh robotics support bay there reaver is gonna be on the way here shortly Reaver is very, very strong in these situations, especially from the high ground. Uh, if you've got a Reaver up there shooting down onto these, uh, onto these lurkers, you're going to get massive, massive value out of that unit. You're going to kill tons and tons of lurkers from that position. This is super annoying. Oh, he loses the observer as well. It's super annoying having that lurker on the low ground able to hit one of those mineral patches up there on the fourth base 
Double Robo. I love it. Both of these guys really committing to the late game, realizing that they're not going to come to a head anytime soon. Neither player going to try and dive upon the other and win right here, right now. Instead, going for the latest of the late game. All the upgrades and all the latest game tech units. Defilers are on the way right now. Oh god, getting more kills with this. Super frustrating play. Looks like he is gonna get... Kill this... Uh, uh, oh, oh, oh. He killed the... Um, the overlord there so no more uh vision of the high ground but he did kill that lurker finally this is frustrating stuff for ysc but he's still on five uh four bases here so he's probably feeling fine looks like the first dark swarm gonna come up here two uh dust clouds here on top of this uh cannon line and the cannon's not really able to do much under this few storms gonna go down here wow that was a beautiful storm just crushing those lings we've got reavers out here as well do they have scarabs looks like coming through with some uh overlords as well revealing everything uh, Zealot's gonna go to work here. They do have to fight under the Stark Swarm. Looks like one single uh, lurker just being a complete nuisance here. Reaver now up at the front, though, should be able to deal with a lot of these lurkers. As long as he's got observer, an observer in the area, he should be able to deal with this. Targeting down the uh, Defiler is also massive. Oh, can he get some good storms here? Some pretty decent storms on a few of these units. Dodging back and forth. Trying not to get hit by these Templar. He picks up the Templar. The Scourge dodged the storm. Shuttle. Oh, oh my god. 7 HP is going to escape. Crazy, crazy stuff there. YC's moved a pretty good sized chunk of his army down to the south and is trying to push up towards the Zerg army here. Try to get a pincer attack going. Soma with infinite money at this point. 5k, 3k in the bank. And it completely maxed out. YSC, not quite there yet. Not quite maxed out. Gonna add on a lot more Reavers here. He's probably gonna switch fully into Zealot uh, High Templar as well with a bunch of Archons mixed in. 22 kill Reaver here. Sitting at the top of that ramp. Gonna rain down fire on those uh, lurkers below as well. As keeping it alive from the crackling attack. Look at that. Just two robos con constantly pumping away here. Making these reavers. Doing a fantastic job of holding on. A nice plague there. Does get the observer. As well as a couple of cannons. A few units here and there. But the reavers are where you really want to target your plagues. Absolutely. Because reavers they deal so much damage you want to target them down first and if they don't have any hp only shields they're much much easier to quickly shoot down another base coming up here at the bottom left for soma soma taking more than half the map now taking that bottom left base that's going to be the point of contention here throughout the rest of this game i believe It'll be up to whether Soma can break this location. If he breaks it, he wins. And if he holds this spot, he probably also wins in a very, very late game. All right, Templar here. Gonna get a fantastic storm there. Absolutely crushing those lurkers. Oh, storm drop here. In the top right hand corner. No, it's just pure zealot, actually. Zealot only. Not going to be enough to break that location. Uh, it does have some good defenses over there. Oh, storms from the high ground. Killing off quite a few drones. But the 6,000 minerals in the bank, I think, is going to be... Uh, keeping Soma feeling, feeling fine here. 
He's not under any pressure in terms of the economy. Even with the losses of those drones, he can easily re-drone um, as much as he wants. And I don't think he really needs too many more drones at this point, to be honest. He's already got mining ha pretty much mined out of uh, a lot of the bases on the map at this point. And soon we're only going to have the top right and bottom left be the only mining bases here so um, adding on more drones at this point probably not going to be necessary there's the plague on the reaver absolutely worth it to throw down a plague on one unit if it's a reaver these things are so hard to kill especially with the cannons uh, supporting them so wow two more reavers while you know there are five reavers defending that one base that seems impossible i'm not sure what soma thinks he can do at that location um seems like he's kind of backed off now and ysc has given up on pushing down the ramp as well just focusing on getting these templar drops off trying to kill some more drones although i don't know how effective that is like losing that shuttle to a scourge unfortunate unfortunate stuff there for ysc this is really the only way he has to slow down the soma in this instance i'm gonna get a nice storm on some of those drones bunch of kills there Pushing through this very tight area, a storm can cover this entire uh, corridor here, at least uh, width-wise, can cover the entire corridor. It's very hard to move units through this very tight area, though, and especially Protoss units, which bump uh, against each other a whole heck of a lot. Now, another ramp down here. YSC is going to try to break this position as well. Pretty tough to get down this ramp, but with two Reavers, he should be able to make it happen. He needs to get them moving, though. Some of these probes just being sacrificed, opening up some supply here for YSC. Doesn't really have mining at the main or natural anymore. Needs to break over here. And uh, time is of the essence right now. Gonna pick off these uh, sunken colonies. Taking his time. YSC being a little bit slow. He's going to get plagued. Big plague here. Really great plague uh, to deal that damage to these Reavers. Makes them so much more squishy. He's going to have to pick that up and uh, micro it forward. Like Archons here under the Dark Swarm will not be able to be targeted by the uh, Sunken Colony. So Sunken Colony is doing zero damage here. He really needs to target these uh, Defilers as well. Defiler can get one shot by a Reaver, by the way. Um, as long as it's not running far away at the time, you really need to be careful with them. Looks like uh, only two Reavers left over here. Did we lose uh, two Reavers already? I thought we had four just a second ago. But I guess during that chaos, two of those Reavers did end up going down. More are being loaded up and sent down, though. Why is he reinforcing this position? His economy is starting to dry up here. Needs to get down this ramp and actually uh, take this additional base super important that he does so before um soma really mines out this location or ysc ends up on just one base alone that's not going to be a good position either another great plague there good storms on a lot of these units able to pick off quite a few uh, lurkers here as they run forward Nice reaver shots. Picking off lurkers one by one as they run up. And uh, Archon sitting here in a dark swarm. Kind of an invincible unit right now. Lings can't kill that. Hydras can't kill that. Only thing that's really dealing damage is lurkers from range. And uh, more reavers going to come up here. Reavers under dark swarm. Really hard to kill. Yeah, yeah. Still pushing forward here. Has a bunch of units on the defense. Does not want to get broken at his natural here. And all the in all the, the attention being taken by this location. 
Everything comes down to bottom left hand corner, it seems. Why is he trying to break it so much, trying to hold it? Whoever wins this battle will end up the victor here and move on. It's like coming up the ramp, not throwing down those Dark Swarms, making sure that he can utilize the Hydralis here to pick off some of these low HP Reavers, and he looks like he has done it. Actually able to get forward here and, and dive upon those Reavers. Looks like they both get picked up and evacuated, but YSC has been held back. Soma has won this battle. Has he won the war, though? Why is he drying up right now? 100 minerals in the bank, 185 supply to work with. But Soma just so powerful right now with 3,000 minerals, 3,000 gas. He can build a, a massive force here once again, even if everything gets wiped out. Oh my god. He just built like 12 lurkers and he still got 4k gas in the bank. That is insanity. So much money here for Soma. Um, with that base in the bottom left now mining happily. He's going to be mining that out as quickly as possible. Um, and I just don't see what YSC can do about it. YSC here hanging out with his kind of powerful Archon army. But unable to push through that really tight choked up area. Lurkers are going to get such good connections. Their their spines are going to get insane, insane value. Diving on top of the shuttle. Not able to get it. Reavers firing from under Dark Storm. I can't even see the Reavers at this point. They're so well hidden under that uh, Cheeto Dust Cloud. Oh, some drones moving here. Nice play. Insanely good play. Finally, why is he able to break down this ramp? Something he was struggling to do for so long finally makes it happen. Can he bust through this insane lurker contain, though? That's so many lurkers stacked. If he gets a bunch of good storms here, he could get huge, huge value. Pretty decent value there. A lot of the uh, lurkers backing up, though. Yeah. And getting into a better position, you want to have them at least one storm apart. So you can get the actual value out of those units. He needs to pull this army up here, man. Screw holding the, the uh, bridges at this point. You need to get over here and, and uh, win this ma uh, battle down in the bottom left-hand corner. Or you're just going to lose this game. Why a C? Maybe expecting a counterattack, but man, oh man. He really needs to get out here. Onto the map. There we go. Finally going to go for it. Trying to break out onto the map here. A lot of hydras running forward, but the storms are pretty darn good. A lot of zealots here and dragoons, but no dark swarm to mitigate their damage. No uh, lurkers in this group either. All the lurkers are down in the bottom left, trying to hold on to that one little spot down there. Looks like uh, YSC could come up and maybe kill a base in the top right. I thought he was going to come down and join this army over here, but seems like he's not interested in doing so. Instead, going to head up towards the top right. Um, being surrounded by a lot of hydras, the bank of Soma has disappeared. 400 minerals are left now he's trying to surround this final group of units big storms on all these uh on everything here all the uh protoss units going down as well and what's that okay uh, a templar made its way over there will eventually be picked off and the army has been cleaned up here you can see so much is sticking with hydralisk Building up a massive group of Hydra and uh, taking the fight, the fights here against YSC. Why is he giving up on the bottom left? Giving up on the bottom left, allowing Soma to keep that. I don't know if that's a good idea. Oh my god, a bunch of lurkers going to be forced to cancel here. And I think he's going to break this upper right. Maybe he can take this base. Oh, he's going to run up here too. I think this is crazy. Gonna go up on this high ground here. Good job with the storms. A lot of drones gonna go down here, but there's really not that much mining left in that location. Oh my god, storm. Oh my god, storms are so good. Big, big reaver shots as well. The army is a little bit split right now for YC, so I'm kind of worried about him. 
the re the lurkers so just running into their death oh my god lurkers just giving up on life there running forward and getting hammered by these uh reavers reaver gonna try to get up here on high ground but will be surrounded and killed archon's doing a good job getting rid of this base but this base doesn't really matter this is the the least <laughs> important base i think on the map right now this base up here it has some value but really the bottom left is where all the value uh is being held right now and as long as soma keeps that alive i think he's gonna be fine his supply is insanely low though I have to point that out. Only 86 applied to 110. This is a very scrappy late game. This is a map without a lot of bases. The base count here is very, very low. These Reavers, the control is really, really good here. It's like the last Reaver trying to get one shot off. Can't get it off. No, oh, he does it. 17 kills. Get some more kills. 17 kills on this one as well. My god. Absolute hero reavers here. And the two Archons gonna kill this base. Soma kind of limping now with only 100 minerals in the bank. Struggling to remake. 77. Oh my god, these reavers. And the shuttle with 1 HP unbelievable control here from YSC oh come on come on come on come on okay I just gonna kill all of this finally taking out those reavers my god that was insane the amount of damage those reavers were able to get just crazy archons coming down here will be taken out but a fresh army has been produced YSC I think this is the last army of YSC he really doesn't have any mining left he needs to get another base here somewhere he's sending out probes um to try and long distance mine it looks like up in the top right hand corner but that still has a hatchery there. It's going to be a long time before he can actually build a, a nexus in that location because the creep is still there and the hatchery is still there. So this is this is a, uh, a tough position. Lurkers coming up here. Massive, massive number of lurkers. Going to surround these, uh, these Templar here. Nice storm. Another double storm there. Able to take out a couple more lurkers. These uh, probes ab absolutely cannot be sent back at this point. Uh, they're just going to have to chill in the top right-hand corner. Actually, he's opened up the back, so he can long-distance mine with the probes into the main base here. Kind of a crazy move from YSC. Oh, he's losing. No, he hasn't mined it out. Oh, no, he didn't mine it out. I thought he did, but... Uh, it looks like that base or that uh, little mineral still not quite mined out. Oh, oh, Archon. Oh my god, Archon's so good. Eight kills on that Archon, killing it off so many links there, even though the, he was surrounded. He kills this hatchery and now can finally think about putting a Nexus up there. Although there really isn't much. Oh man, these Reavers walking their way over towards the base in the bottom left-hand corner. Can he get some good shots there? It looks like Soma completely aware of that play. 100 minerals left. Another army coming up here towards the top right. Soma not going to let this base go without a fight. Looks like he finally mined through that back area and can retreat. But he loses a Archon and a couple of Dragoons in that case. Pretty good uh, plague there. Looks like uh, Reaver's going to deny this base for a little bit. Some Hydras are coming down, but Zealots and Templar are on their way. He should be able to, to kill this base, maybe? It's really, really close. Again, 56 supply to 89. This is an insanely scrappy game for a map that has been almost mined out at this point. Going after that, uh, Hydra's going after the Reaver. Storm, Storm. Oh my God, there's so many drones. So many drones here, but he's watching something else on the map. It's like a bunch of probes are gonna end up going down here. 
Probe's gonna come to fight, I think, with this Reaver. Oh god. The Reaver. Oh, it's gonna go down. It goes down. The Reaver falls. And the uh, hatchery dies as well. We still do have some storms here. One more zealot as well. The the probes are gonna have to fight here. There's only like one group of lings, couple of uh, of hydras here. He does get the archon though. Nice targeting there by Soma, going for the unit that truly matters here. Zealot's gonna come up onto this high ground, try to kill these last few hydras, but it looks like. Soma shouldn't be able to micro his way away from this. Oh my goodness. Both players with about less than 100 minerals apiece. Nothing left in the bank here. Gonna make an Archon. Oh man, that's unfortunate. Gonna lose this Archon? Oh, the surround on the probes. Keeps the Archon alive. Crazy, crazy stuff here. Looks like this uh, lurker sh egg should end up going down. Probe's going to be brought to fight once again. I think we've got like an insanely low number of, of actual attacking units in this game. Most of everything is drones and probes at this point. He needs to return all this money. Look at all the money he has on, on these uh, probes here. This is like a couple hundred minerals. Like 50 probes going back to, to return there. Can make a few more units here and try his best to, um, to pick up some minerals somewhere. I don't really know what the heck is going on at this point, guys. We're 45 supply to 41. And why is he? I mean, he could still make Templar. As long as he has a tiny bit of minerals coming in, he can still make Templar, and it, really that's all you need. Storms and Archons. Storms and Archons can win you a game. He doesn't have any more Reavers left, and Soma's mining here in the top. I think Soma's got this, actually. With this mining coming through, I know it's not much, and it's going to be less and less as time goes on, but that is just, I think, too good. He's going to get some plagues down here as well on all these units. All the probes have been plagued, by the way. All the uh, the zealots have been plagued. Hydras are going to kill everything so fast. There it is. YSC out of options here. Sends the probes to their doom. GG. Wow. An amazing game there. Soma takes it away, though. Really impressed with YSC. The way he played that out was brilliant. His control with the Reavers was insane. Kind of a gentleman's agreement in the early game to not attack, just sit back and max out, get all the bases on the map and just Soma managed to grab one more. During that scramble, he gets the base in the bottom left. He holds it for long enough, prevents y more importantly, prevents YSC from getting it, and has more mining overall. God, what an insane, insane back and forth. That's probably going on the highlights list, guys. We're going to go ahead and jump on into our next game. It's going to be Soma versus Light. That's coming up next. Wow, I've got to say, one of the best weeks of KCM I've seen so far. At least this season. But, um, all time. It's up there. So far, I mean, we've still got a few more games to go. We've got two Zerg players remaining. It's going to be Soma versus Light here. If Light takes out Soma, we're going to go all the way to game eight. That is just how it's got to be, so... I'm cheering for light here. We are now on Heartbreak Ridge. Um, yeah, that old map I was telling you guys about earlier. It's been around forever. Plenty of old games on here. Uh, I remember playing this map like pre-remastered. Uh, quite a bit, and I think that when the ladder first opened, this is one of the maps, one of the earliest maps on the ladder, so played quite a few games on this map. I don't like it. Um, not a big fan. It is a pretty crazy map. Uh, a lot of 
weird high grounds. There's high ground behind your natural. That's never something that I'm a fan of. I'm one of those guys that, you know, I, I do play BGH sometimes, but one of the most annoying things in the world is when BGH maps have that high ground behind your mineral patches and they can just like drop two tanks there and win the game. That's so freaking annoying. I hate that so much. Um, I mean, of course, there's way to, ways to deal with it, but it's just, uh, you know, some maps don't have it. Some maps do have it. And I play a BGH game. I don't think that it has a droppable uh, high ground and then someone drops a high drops up there and just kills all my drones. Like, oh, God, it's just such a piss off. Anyway, there is a high ground above your natural here. You can mine out minerals to go behind there. Lurkers can get behind there pretty easily. That's something that we've seen happen in the past. Um, could end up seeing it again here, but uh, that that is a little bit tough to get to. Uh, I think that Light is going to be completely aware of the possibility of that. Uh, really, with this setup, the wall here in the front, I think that the Lurker attack actually becomes more and more of a, a possibility here. Because, you know, if you do go for a Lurker, uh, early Lurker attack as Soma, you can get this wall for sure. You can kill this wall and maybe you can go around behind and actually get over top of the minerals as well that would be uh that would be a really good move um so keep that in mind of course soma he may end up just going a two hatch to play that is his bread and butter um we saw him go for a three hatch versus royal but i'm not sure if we're gonna see that again uh, kind of catching royal off guard a little bit maybe hitting a timing that he wasn't expecting but um, nice job with this marine putting him behind the mineral patches that's so frustrating gonna lose one ling but the marine does go down so not the biggest deal in the world soma clears that out without too much problem he's sending three more marines across the map uh, i don't know if he wants to actually attack with this i played a ladder game this uh actually it was today i played a ladder game where uh they the guy bunker rushed me i had to hold it and then he walked eight marines past my sunken colony i think he lost like three marines but he got into my main with like six marines left and i had to fight with drones it was super super annoying anyway that's my ladder experience all the dumbest builds in the world looks like like gonna go back home he knows you're not supposed to just walk past the sunken colony. Um, there is no sunken colony here. There's just a couple of links, so maybe he could have gotten some pressure on there, but that's not the standard way to play. And Light is the king of standard. He makes the standard, let's be honest. A third hatch on the way, so he is going three hatch. So Soma has been converted. He is no longer two hatch king. He is going for a third hatch two games in a uh, in a row here. Well, not in a row, I guess, versus Terran in a row, but two games in this series, he's going three hatch. That is a big change here for Soma. There's a completely different way of playing this matchup, whether you're going two hatch or one hatch. Uh, it makes all the difference in the world to the way the Terran player has to respond as well. The timings for when moveouts occur and for uh, when you have to build sunkins and that type of thing is is completely different. So we'll see how Soma does here. He did a great job versus uh, Royal. And we'll see how it goes versus Light. He hasn't produced those early lings as he did before. Instead, he's producing two sunken colonies. So double sunken here means he's not going to have to produce those lings. And he won't have them to try to finish off Light uh, if he starts to get the advantage with the Meatless play, unfortunately. But uh, let's see how the control is here from Soma. What he's able to do over at this natural. There are those two supply depots right next to the wall here as well which could be harassed very heavily we'll see if he goes for that again it worked excellently versus royal so i wouldn't be shocked to see soma try to repeat that success now small group of medic marine single fire bat here out in the front but they've got nowhere to go the two uh sunken colonies more than enough to hold this off and with the mutilus uh coming across the map you really can't move out with this army uh, there's no third base to attack so uh, 
White's just going to stay here. He's going to stay here and try to defend his natural. There's lots more drones being added on. Soma has big, big production at this moment. Not a lot of gas to work with, but uh, he's going to be able to produce quite a lot of lings or another hatch here. Like doing a good job keeping him away from the supply depots here in the front. Soma looking for opportunities, not able to find anything as of yet. Takes some serious damage on one of these Mutalists. And continuing to produce here. Soma sticking on two base, three hatch, no third base here. Just pumping out a huge amount of Muta at this moment. He's going to roll around the outside here with a bunch of Mutas. He's going towards this natural. Another sunken colony coming down. He's going to get enough sunkens here so that he can dive onto the Terran base. Try to kill as many... Um, oh god, he's got to start these though. You have to start the sunkens. Sunken starting a slight bit late here. They might not be finished by the time the Marines engage. Oh, I think he's bought enough time now. Light being a little bit slow to move forward. Yeah, the Sunken's finished just in time. And four Sunken's, a fifth Sunken here. Uh, just about to finish up. Oh my god, is he going to break through this? It looks like he will. All the Sunken's end up going down. Five Sunken's, not enough to stop Light here. He's going to break through. All the Mutas have to run back and they get caught. Uh, he's going to lose the Spire here in the natural. Light is just on fire. Running through this uh, defense here. And Soma going to lose his hatch. Oh, man. This is it. This is, um, this is all she wrote here, I think. Soma not going to be able to come back from this loss. Um, more Marines coming up here. And I think this should be it for... Mutilus is all that remains, and this is a huge group of Marine Medic. GG! Soma taps out, Light takes that win. Five Sunkins, men. Still not enough to stop that attack. That is rough. But Soma gets knocked out, and I get my wish, I guess. It's going to be Light versus Snow coming up next, and then Queen in the background. We're going to get all eight games. No anti-spoiler this week. Let's go ahead and jump into the next one. Ah, well, damn. They can't all be bangers, am I right? It's like Light just bulls through Soma there. Um, and I've definitely had that situation before as well. You're like, oh, yeah, this is definitely enough Sunkins to hold off that marine medic ball but marine medic is very very good one of the best uh compositions in the game they really complement each other so well and the dps is insane survivability as well with the the medics just perfect perfect for breaking through entrenched positions like that i mean once you have dark swarm in that it's a totally different story lurkers as well but just pure sunken colony you need to have an, a, a lot of sunkins to hold that many marines and light breaks through easily he's now on to uh this map versus snow this is retro We've got Snow here in the bottom left-hand corner, Light in the top right. And it should be an epic game here versus these two, or with these two uh, absolutely fantastic TVP players. In the cross maps on this new map, we're going to get a good look at the way Light and Snow are going to be approaching this matchup. Light rarely, if ever, goes for a timing attack. He is much more uh, comfortable with the standard standard play going for upgrades and a whole lot of factories just getting up to his 2-1 uh, or 3-2 and eventually slowly pushing out getting four bases and uh, taking the game in a long drawn out uh, TVP now this map, you can break it down. I've heard it compared to a lot of different maps, but me personally, I think this is a 
Fighting spirit clone, in a way. You've got the center, obviously, which is uh, kind of a base. It's not really a base, though, as like fighting spirit is a base. It's got a nice open center. Um, you've got your third base and then a, uh, uh, you got a natural and then a third base and each quadrant has a natural and a third base That's uh, that's fighting spirit for you as well. Some of these other maps like polypoid vermeer uh, etc uh, Allegro they have a lot more bases uh, to work with uh, there's usually a third and then a fourth location as well for each quadrant so or a shared fourth with the two quadrants sharing that fourth but this map you've got the long distance to the third base for the Terran uh, and you've got an opening that goes into the main area of the map I think this is just a much better balanced uh, fighting spirit and I, I think this is going to become a really nice standard map, just like Fighting Spirit became so popular over the years. Wow, he gets that zealot and he get, gets away as well. Really nicely done there. Snow doing his absolute best to keep that uh, zealot alive and try to pick off the vulture, but doesn't retreat far enough away. Gets stuck in that little corner there and... Light gonna get away with a nice early kill and he should be able to repair his vulture here back at home without any trouble so snow getting nothing done with his early uh zealot investment we'll see what his follow-up is going to be because we already know what lights follow-up should be here it's gonna be armory it's going to be a second factory then he'll get his starport and then he'll get his science facility he'll get a ton of factories he'll move out to take his third and this third here on this map pretty reasonable to take it's not easy by any means because there's a long path to get to the third uh the uh, protoss player can try to break your natural while you're moving towards the third base uh, sort of like fighting spirit but the third high ground location is a little bit different because the ramps that go up into the third base are very very close together and you'll see what i mean here once light takes his third base it's possible on this map for terran to siege up on low ground on their side of the low ground and uh, hit things that are on the other side uh, coming up the ramp uh, which means it's much, much harder for the Protoss to uh, get on top of the third base location and just prevent the Terran player from taking that location. So we've got Snow here, of course, loading up his drop. He has uh, Reaver tank on the way here, as should be expected. And you can see uh, Terran already setting up his uh, turret ring here, getting mines out everywhere as well. Doesn't want to take big damage from this shuttle. And, you know, even though it's light, even though he should be able to defend this, no problem. It, it, I mean, Snow on the other side, he makes miracles happen with these shuttles. So we'll have to watch very closely to see if he can get himself a big advantage here uh, through the use of these uh, of this Reaver shuttle combo. Hiding the turret under this eBay. Okay, actually moves the eBay out of the way. Just getting more vision here. He sees the shuttle coming in. And the, the first move has been fended. Fended off here. Snow gonna back away. There's the starport. And uh, this is definitely gonna be up mech. It's gonna be exactly what we were expecting out of light. And it will be a long... Oh, is he gonna fly in? Oh my god, I thought he was... <laughs> scaring me there. Don't fly in right now. That's... um. It's a bad move. He, he waits for speed and now he's going to go for it. Okay, flying straight by with that speed means he only takes uh, the damage from... Or he only takes enough damage to get rid of the shields there. Drops a Reaver once again. Goes for the Goliath. Going to try and get a shot here over the uh, Mineral Skate. Gets three or four kills. Not bad at all. Oh, and the mind drag into the tank as well. Really good move there. Lose the Goliath. 
Has to siege up once again. Push this t uh, Reaver away and... Actually, Snow has done a really good job here. He's gotten a lot of damage. He's gonna drop once again. He killed the uh, turret with one of those Zealots. Not gonna get a good shot off here. It does dud out. Gets a Vulture though. And another. Two more Vultures. Gonna go back for some more here in the main base as well. Oh my goodness. This is getting bad. Okay, he can't drop here because there is that sieged up tank. But making a real problem here for Light right now. Light is having a hard time uh, getting rid of this Reaver. He's getting one more shot. Oh my god. Another massive hit there. And he keeps the Reaver alive as well. Snow does not disappoint when it comes to Reaver play. He is always able to get insane, insane damage. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that spinning? He's getting the Dragoon range very, very late here. So really delaying that range in order to get his Reavers out as quickly as possible, plus the, the speed, right? He had to use that 200 gas to get the early shuttle speed, but he made it worth it 100%, getting a ton of drones, or a ton of SEVs, excuse me. I want to see that Reaver. We got to get a click on that Reaver and see how many kills it has because I'm imagining it's got to be at least 10, right? And most of those are going to be SCVs, a few Vultures as well. He killed a tank as well with the, with the uh, mine drag. Third base on the way. Adding on some factories now. His supply block, though, a rare supply block for light. 76 to 76, he starts two supply depots. That is... Ooh, that's not good. There we go. Finally, pops those supply depots and will get back to producing, but... Um, light may be flustered here. Having a hard time this game. And, uh, I mean... Definitely, I can. It can definitely um, agree with him there, or I can. I can feel his pain right now. This is a really rough situation. Ooh, cloak. Whoa. Wraith with cloak is coming out right now. Uh, I don't know about this. I guess you can chase down the the shuttles here with the moving shot, but. Man, that seems like a, a huge investment. Cloak is very expensive. Wraiths are very expensive. Uh, every Wraith is a, a tank that um, that wasn't made, right? So uh, I don't know if I like this play. Okay, I want to get a click. I'll oh, click that. Click that. Reaver, I want to see how many kills he has. Not going to get the click there, unfortunately. Does get over here and stops the cannon at least. Kills the probe as well. Not the biggest win because the uh, Nexus is already down. Go ahead and scans the main base. Sees an opening, an opportunity here. A draw opportunity into the main base. Let's see how many probes he can get. Flying in here. Getting the probes on the uh, gateway, or on the uh, the gas here, excuse me. Three or four so far. Five, six. Oh, he's going to get the shuttle, and that is a sick move, actually. Okay, 13 kill. 13 kill Reaver. Here comes the uh, dragons with the observer, though. He's not going to be able to finish off that Reaver, but did a reasonable job there. Picking off that shuttle. Now he can move out a much much more safely oh he's gonna get over here and uh, kill these reavers now cutting them off not allowing them to uh run up to this high ground here and you can see the high ground tanks can siege up on this low ground here and hit anything that's coming up the high ground uh, adjacent that high ground where the uh, protoss can try to break through Okay, you can see Dragoon's already up here, but I think that's going to be fine. That's not a huge amount of Dragoon's. I'm going to have some shuttles coming up here. Oh my god, the Wraiths! Four Wraiths, but not moving them along with the shuttles, so the shuttles get their full unloads. Looks like he's going to go after those two shuttles now. He picks them both off, but they get all of their units out, and I think 
that Snow should be easily able to break this. The investment into double or into to four wraiths not really paying off right now because Snow is able to deny this third base. Light going to be questioning his decision there. Oh man, Tank going to go down as well. Oh, that's so rough. <laughs> And once the first drop has been denied, it becomes so incredibly hard for the Terran to make it out on the map once again to take that third base and actually have a decent late game. Looks like he's coming around with the drop ship. Does get spotted there by an observer, manages to pick off the observer at least, but man oh man i feel like goliath with range so much uh, of a better option for picking off the the shuttles here i mean of course you can run around with wraiths and potentially get pick offs on the shuttles like out on the map but you could see there in that engagement the shuttles were fine to just fly in, drop all of their stuff. And uh, of course they died afterwards, but that's after they already dropped their zealots on top of the uh, on top of the units and won the fight. So that's completely fine for Snow now. Coming up here once again, third base, trying to take it. Let's see how it goes. Mines here on the high ground. Tanks are not close enough uh, not far enough south here where he can prevent more dragoons from coming up on the high ground here. He needs a tank a little bit closer. He's just going to move those tanks up now. But a big wave of Protoss units coming towards this natural. Light's going to have to hold both these locations at the same time. His natural and this third. Oh man, this is a really nice timing attack from Snow. Going to give it light a lot of trouble here good job with the mines okay shoving everything back tank on high ground is enough to to stop mini or stop uh snow from diving directly in the front looks like he's gonna get both these observers as well so nice use out of those rates still i don't think that the uh, the um early investment was truly worth it cybernet score is spinning what is this for? He was getting armor. Is he getting armor for his shuttles? That would be funny. I think he might be actually, because I don't see any uh, transition into carriers happening for a little while. More bases down here in the bottom right. Snow taking advantage of his position at this point. Just expanding like a madman. Looks like Light prepping to take his fourth now. The third is, is secure. Fourth base is not too far to take either. It's just up to the north here. Look at that. Very difficult to break up this ramp. Snow probably not going to, uh, to get up there this game unless he goes for some Arbiters and Recall or a massive, massive drop with shuttles. It's like a dropship heading around the top part of the map but does get spotted out really, really early. Race going for a shuttle here. Ooh, nice. Really, really good move there. I wonder how, what was inside that shuttle. Could have been some Templar, could have been a Reaver, but um, really good move. Looks like he's looking to pick off that Observer as well. No, not going to have the scan ready to do so. A lot more gateways coming out here. This drop up in the top right hand corner does stop Snow from taking this base. I, I don't think he was actually trying to take it at the moment, but I wasn't sure if there was a probe up there or not. Looks like he's going to fly into the main. Going for a probe, okay. Not exactly the intention for these wraiths, but tiny bit of harass there. I think he was waiting for that shuttle to pop, but the shuttle comes out a little bit later and the race not able to dive upon it. Now, the fourth command center is coming up here in the main. The main is about to run out of minerals, so it's uh, imperative right now that Light get out and actually take this fourth here. Plus three is done, no armor upgrades. Light not able to make that investment, spending too much money on 
Wraiths and tanks trying to take this third base. Looks like this drop still making problems here for Snow. Although it's uh, heavily diminished now without any vultures. The tank move out here coming from the third base, surprisingly. He actually wants to get down here and hit Snow as he's taking his fourth and fifth. Actually, this is a fifth and sixth base, excuse me, going after the shuttle. Good job picking, uh, or at least stopping the uh, uh, shuttle from dropping out these Hyde Templar. Now going after the Hyde Templar as well. Gonna get this observer. A strong push down south here, and he's coming across this bridge, which is gonna be hard uh, for Snow to attack into without any shuttles. Oh man, that's a lot of zealots, though, and not too many tanks here. Not too many tanks, indeed. The uh, mine drag is pretty amazing. And there's just not enough vultures here, not enough tanks, not enough stuff for light. Snow with just way too much running over this army. And yeah, the zealots have basically dried up, but there's only three tanks left over to deal with all of these dragoons. Two more are going to arrive and push forward, but I don't know, man. Lights push towards this bottom right. I don't think it's going to fare well. I think Light needs to take a fourth base here if he wants any hope uh, of longevity in this game. But he's continuing to push down towards this bottom right. I guess he knows better than me. 100% he does. He's going to keep going down towards here. Trying to break through this location. Big drops with some storms. All the tanks are going to get wiped. It's like Dragon's just running forward here. Going to pick off the science vessel. No, going after the tanks. That D-Matrix making that tank last for an incredible amount of time. But once again, the tank count has been reduced. And another storm goes down there, picking off even one more last tank here. Another shuttle pops out. Where are the wraiths? Do we still have wraiths or have they all been picked off? Because it would be really uh, fantastic to have a few wraiths here now. Tanks are getting in range of this... Uh, uh, Nexus. Probes will be evacuated up to the main. Quite a few uh, gateways in that bottom right hand corner. He's also taking top left during all this. So, whenever he has that Nexus finished uh, and the minerals start to mine out in the main and natural, he should be able to transfer all those probes and get good mining in the top left. Meanwhile, dropping here on top of these tanks, this should be an easy clear. I think Light getting a bit ahead of himself, trying to send a uh, command center down here to the bottom right. GG! Light taps out, and Snow takes him down. Wow, a great game there from Snow. That really fast shuttle speed was something else. He got shuttle speed before Dragoon Range, which we've seen a lot of Robos before Dragoon Range, but that's pretty crazy. Going for Robo, Reaver, Shuttle, and then Shuttle range, uh, shuttle Speed before the Dragoon Range, that's something I think we haven't really seen before, and Light ends up getting a, or taking a ton of damage from that early reaver uh, because of it able to just dive right over top of those turrets and uh, get a ton of damage that's gonna be hard that's that's a cool move it's gonna be hard to predict and defend against these Terran players uh, in the future, I think S Snow showing us something really cool. Now it's going to be Snow versus Queen for our final game. Hopefully, you're going to see another great one there. Let's jump into game number eight. All right, our final game of the night. It's going to be Snow versus Queen. Guys, I've just been informed that if you fail to subscribe to this video, Snow is going to drop Reavers in your main and destroy your entire SCV line drone line or probe line he uses reavers in every single matchup this man an absolute legend able to take down light in that last game with some supreme control now we're here on nemesis is going to be taking on queen this is a crazy map it's been a wild one for sure it looks like it has a ton of bases on it but it actually doesn't have 
that many bases, to be honest. We've got about the same number here as Fighting Spirit or Retro as we just saw. You've got your natural, and you've got a third base uh, and in each quadrant. So, really not that many bases here, though it does feel like a very, very large map because of all the islands, all the different locations that you can take. But, uh, yeah, this map could also go to a mined out situation. It is possible, just like on uh, uh, Dark Origin. That's the one. That we saw earlier in this series. Ooh, nice block there. Queen bringing out two drones. He really wants to take his third or his natural right there. He does get it down. A couple links on the way now. Queen, where is he going to take his third base though? I like the uh, the three o'clock here, but maybe he wants to go bottom right. That can also be a good base to hold. This map really annoys me. It's on the ladder right now. It's super annoying because the rally point, uh, or or sorry, the uh, the pathing path here can be really really bad sometimes. Um, I've had it personally in the past uh, where I've been rallying links across the map and they just end up in one of these corners, um, kind of cucking me and like making me lose the game just because I didn't have you know 10 lings when I should have had 10 lings in the opponent's natural but um yeah it, it, it's it's difficult there, there's a lot of going on behind the scenes here behind the uh, just regular control above and beyond that you have to get your rallies uh, properly set you have to uh, send your units on multiple like maybe shift clicks around the map in order to make them go in the right direction uh, that or you just have to continuously click them uh, in the right direction to make them walk around this map because like I say they will get caught in weird locations here even behind the, you see these like this ring of minerals around the the center of the map i've had links get stuck behind those minerals some somehow the pathing is so bad that links will actually get stuck there and they just won't move it's so so frustrating happened to me a few times and um it's actually cost me games before where i'm playing a zvz and see that mineral right there you can get, end up getting caught behind one of those uh, with like four or five lings and they just won't move. Um, no matter how much you click, like let's say you're clicking towards the natural and they're on a hotkey, they'll just stay there um, and just be stuck forever. So you really have to like right click them away from the mineral and then around the mineral and then send them in towards your opponent's natural anyway i've talked about this too much just my own ladder frustrations we've got links here in the front trying to do some damage to this gateway but as you can see more than enough zealots are now out and as long as he doesn't let the links run by here snow should be a hundred percent fine stargate coming up now third base on the way here for queen back at home layer nearly complete he should have a uh, spire coming up soon not really mining at that location but he should get to it here in a moment looks like it's not going to be any sort of bust here out of queen he will be going into a macro game is a little bit supply blocked at the moment never like to see that but there it is the uh, Overlord does pop out, and he is in the green once again, in the white once again. You never want to be in the red. You never want to be supply blocked here. That's probably one of the biggest uh, hurdles uh, to being really decent at this game is just hitting your supply perfectly. Um, definitely in my experience it has been one of the major uh, one of the major difficulties now this probe actually gets left alive in the main I cannot believe that Queen forgot about that probe um, he saw the, the the zealots moving out and I think he assumed he, he'd actually killed that but this probe is back and it's gonna start attacking these uh these drones, once again, is so frustrating here. This queen had the speed. He was chasing down that drone, but his links just weren't attacking. For whatever reason, that low, low HP drone, or that low, low HP probe, I think he finally did pick it off. This is what I'm talking about. See these links? They were obviously sent uh, as part of a control group uh, over towards the, 
the the front area of that third base, but they kind of get stuck there. Now finally he's moved them, but uh, that can be very frustrating uh, if those slings do end up pathing in the wrong direction. Here's some scourge. Loses the corsair there. Really really good timing here for queen. Bit of an unfortunate turn of events now for Snow. Not getting out his Corsair very quickly. Uh, does get the scout off, but loses the first Corsair. That's brutal. Um, after losing the first Corsair, you are subject to the whims of the Zerg player. If they want to dive in with a bunch of Mutas and Scourge, you really you don't have a lot of options. You've got to hold on against it. Looks like he's chasing down these Corsairs now. The cannon does finish though. And he should be able to get rid of those. And there it is. He does get rid of those. We're going to see eggs being killed. Yes, eggs are going to be killed here. Queen needs to open this area up because he's starting to produce hydras. Um, but the island there is a little bit difficult. He, he needs to uh, regain flow or uh, create flow from his uh, two hatches down at the third base and his natural and main base uh, if he doesn't get rid of those eggs right now and for instance snow is to do an attack he would just be stuck uh, with whatever he popped out of his main and natural and his third would just not be able to assist at all all those hydras on an island would be stuck so he is going to open that up and start to flood the map with hydras he's taking map control here looks like that egg just about to go down here those hydras will be able to join the fray there are the cannons a lot of cannons being added on here by snow but is it going to be in time speed zealots are ready so he should be able to buy enough time here for the templars to come out um right now cannons are not even done yet there's a first dt dt here and no no overlord okay there's overlord overlord is coming only 35 hp on that but there's more overlords coming across the map here as well um he does cancel one cannon i don't know if he's gonna regret that though because this is a huge hydralist force i do not see a templar oh boy this is not good this is not good at all we got five cannons here a lot of zealots but this is a good amount of hydras, a really strong amount of hydras here. He could definitely go for the kill. That Templar doesn't have enough energy. Runs out in front. What is it doing? That's so painful. Ooh, man, I'm cringing right now. That Templar just wanders out into the front of this wall and that means queen is going to get free buildings here in the front he's going to kill both both of these and there's no templar here that was only one templar being produced and it walked out in the front and just died so we don't have storm here for a little bit longer it was a good trade with those zealots just eating some damage onto his shields and uh, killing off a couple of hydras and queen will eventually fall back so uh, he is safe for now but that was scary man that was real scary looks like the dt gonna do its work it clears out the eggs going over to center left and it's gonna kill the assimilators as well which is really really nice once these assimilators are down, this is essentially an island. You can't get through this area. And uh, that's perfect for Snow. He doesn't want Hydras to break through this location. He may even send the DT down to the south and possibly kill these gases as well. Yeah, might as well just kill those. And don't allow any uh, counterattacks into that third base. And maybe he can even take 12 to go and do the same exact thing with the DT, clear that area out and, and just uh, make himself a little home there in the 12 o'clock. Uh, Queen, meanwhile, hasn't taken a fourth base just yet. He is macroing very hard. I, I would assume he's going to take a fourth base here relatively soon. And we should end up seeing a, uh, what's it called? A uh, Queen's Nest here and a Hive coming up. Um, uh, hmm, this is interesting. Overload speed obviously is done, and it's been done for a while, so maybe he's going for Overlord drop here. That's quite a few overs. We do hear them loading up now. So he's going to try and break this third. Actually, 
Where's that overlord going? He's sending a dropper lord with couple of uh, lurkers in it. Is he going to go for this mineral line here at the main? Ooh, good job. With the Corsair. He spots this. He knows it's coming. We're going to try to find another way in, but he hasn't found it yet. Looks like Snow knows about this dropper lord. He's ready for it. Gonna send the uh, Corsairs to deal with this drop over here, though. Lurkers managing to get burrowed, and the, the uh, Hydras are uh, in high enough numbers that the Zealots do have to retreat. High Templar is there, but doesn't get brought forth to deal with that. I think a storm on that big group of Hydras would have been insane as they were dropping out. Would have been super, super strong. He isn't able to get it, though, and now the, uh, the position here for Queen is a little bit hard to break. Uh, lurkers and Hydra's on high ground. It's going to take quite a bit to get up there and, and actually uh, smash that spot uh, effectively. So he, he has to build up quite a few Zealots. Um, zealots are getting ravaged here, by the way. The, the, the uh, shots here from the Lurkers are doing amazing, amazing damage. This is a very, very efficient trade for Queen. He even picks up the... Oh, oh my god, he picks up the Lurker. So clutch here to just grab that Lurker. And he even gets the... Oh my god. Queen is so good. He is so, so good. He even gets the Observer as well. Noticing that that was very low HP, he drops out one Hydra and goes for it. Oh my god, Lurker shots here could be amazing. But they are not. Another drop coming in here to the main base now. There are a bunch of uh, Templar here ready to go though. And a whole lot of uh, Dragoons as well. They're going to be dealing damage to the Overlords. They're going to be just dealing with these Lurkers very quickly. And Queen losing a lot of supply here. He's going to go for the... Uh the probes in the main base though probes in the main base oh my god that's a lot of kills that's a lot of kills eight kills on this lurker now doing fantastic damage however this dark templar could do even more here sitting with the zero kills waiting for maybe some more drones oh man he could kill so many drones here and queen he doesn't seem prepared for it at all He's lost a bunch of overlords. He's focusing on macroing back up once again. Chase down these uh, Corsairs as well. Oh, oh man. This could do so much damage. It's on hold position right now. Snow going to send it in here shortly, I would imagine. But right now, he's got to deal with quite a few drops. He's going to be pushing out. Now he sends it in. He sends it in right now. Perfect time. Right as this, this army is going on. Three kills, four kills, five kills, six kills. All these drones going down. Snow getting amazing, amazing damage here. He is going to eventually target one of these Hydras, but absolutely massive damage there. Ten kills, eleven kills. Just about gets that last one as well. So much damage from our Brodos player onto Queen. That is crazy. Crazy, crazy good. Snow is so smart. Waiting for that drone transfer. He saw there was about five drones there, but he knew he could get more. He waits for the drone transfer. And then he sends the DT in right as that attack is happening. Now, coming up forward here with this huge amount of Dragoons. It's going to be hard to engage this army uh, with pure Hydra uh, Lurker at this moment because there's just so much ranged damage. And a bunch of Zealots heading down to the bottom right. This could be the killing blow here, boys. Two hatches down here and not many drones left over. They are going to both get killed. He's focusing down the hatchery. Another wave of Zealots comes through. Hydras are doing their best, but this hatchery is not long for this world. A Templar coming down with the storm should be able to clear out a bunch of Hydras. Okay, he's going to hold this ramp and just prevent his uh, reinforcements from coming up. Okay, he does kill the Templar. So killing that Templar is a good move, but oh man. Oh man, the army is getting past Queen's army here. He's going to lose this hatch. Oh my god. 88, 70, 50, 40, 25. Oh my god. He keeps it alive, but yeah, I mean, the, the struggle here is really, really hard now for... 
queen. He's losing lurkers in the middle of the map. Oh, he gets a nice shot there. It kills a couple of uh, 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 dragoons at least. A lot of hydras out here on the map. Um, he can start to re-drone down in the bottom right, I guess. The mining's not going to be great, but um, mining is mining. Um, they definitely want to get that income going. Running forward here some more. Trying to jump on top of this army. Trying to kill this army if he can. But eating a lot of storms as he runs forward. The lurkers backed away from don't even get a single shot off and eat a full storm. So not the greatest trade for them. 44 HP on that. Oh, God. Another base coming down in the bottom left-hand corner. I feel like you just run a hero zealot down to the bottom right like we saw like we saw in uh, a previous game. What, when was that? I think that was Mini uh, who ran a zealot into the, into the base. That was uh, another highlight game for sure. But... Um, yeah, I feel like here you just send one zealot, right? Send one zealot and kill that hatch. It's only got like 26 HP, so two or three hits will will finish it off. But uh, so far he hasn't done so. He's uh, moving ever more closer to the uh, bottom right, though. He definitely wants to get down there and prevent more bases from going up in that location. Um, oh, another base here on the high ground. So the natural has been taken. Queen keeping this game going. Has a an okay supply, 123 to 190 though, seems a little bit uh, untenable here for Queen. That's a lot of lurkers on high ground. He needs to snipe this Observer though. The Observer is everything. He's got to get it. He has to kill it right now. He gets it. Does he have another Observer? I don't see one. Lurkers have all, all but been killed off though. There's barely any left over. There's another, other, an, another Observer going down. Excuse me. Tripping all over myself here. Oh, this is a... Dirty, dirty move here. Can he actually hit with the lurker? Not, just not quite. He's going to burrow. He's going to get some shots here. One, two, big hit there. Four kills, five kills. But most of the drones will, or most of the probes will be saved. Maybe he can take another fight here. Once uh, more action uh, erupts on the map, he's actually going to fall back from this base down in the bottom right hand corner unfortunate stuff there for queen but he will catch some reinforcements here in the middle losing this base is a real pain though oh man oh man that was a lot of good storms there damn so many kills so many kills going down in that location looks like some dts two dark templars doing a fantastic job here uh sandbagging this push here and uh looks like gonna kill off a bunch of these lurkers that storm was absolutely insane there's uh, no more storms here but the reinforcements uh coming from behind not enough lurkers here to actually deal with all these zealots and it looks like queen just barely not gonna be able to break this location the probes even being brought up to fight citizens arrest here surround and kill those hydras Another lurker here about to be picked off. And the queen running out of gas. 74 supply to 175. A hundred supply advantage. Definitely not something that the queen is going to come out of. Oh, getting some kills. Lurker able to do some damage. Not... Uh, not enough though definitely not enough the army here cannot be denied that is so so much protoss 181 supply is just a ton a ton of units beneath the storm but could come forward get some good templar kills here there we go two templar kills three templar kills is very very nice of course he will be surrounded here by the zealots but can micro his way back Looks like only mining here really at the center left base. I guess there's a tiny bit at the natural and down at the bottom center or bottom left, I guess, is what Snow has at this moment. But, you know, Queen just doesn't have anything here. He's got no minerals at that location, no minerals at the, at the natural, just a tiny bit left. And uh, he's going to try and take 12 o'clock, but 12 o'clock. It's not it's it's not blocked off yet. You haven't killed the uh, the assimilators, which means that 
Yeah, he, he's gonna try and kill them now, but it's just too late. Um, the assimilators get opened up, and Queen's just gonna have to run away. Oh man, this is um, I hate to to call it before it's before the GG is uh is dropped, but this is this is a snow victory here. We're gonna have a Protoss win. Uh, some mutas coming out, so you know Queen trying to make the most of what he's got left. That's uh, 11 mutas. That's 1,100 minerals, 1,100 gas. That's a lot to invest in the mutas here, and he's gonna try and pick off as many uh, Templar as he can. But he eats some shots from the Archon there and taps out. GG. The last desperation move does not pay off, and Queen is eliminated. Protoss victory this week, and the uh, runners up here, the Zerg, gonna get that uh, runner up prize. And that is it for week six of the KCM. All right, my friends, here is your score screen. Looks like Terran lagging behind here as we. Approach the later weeks of KCM. Haven't been able to get any wins lately. I think the only win they've had this this uh, season has been week three. Protoss taking that win. Managing to jump ahead of Zerg a little bit here. Where are we at with Terran? Only at three points. So even if they won week seven and week eight, I don't think they could bring it back. Um... Yeah, they would just... I mean, if Zerg got third place both those last two weeks, then I guess it would be 7-7. Seven to seven. But that's, uh, that's a pretty big ask. I think that Zerg is definitely going to be able to place at least second place one time in the next two weeks. So we're going to have a PV... Uh, or we're going to have a, a Terran in the semifinals. And... Um, We'll see who ends up going up against them. Will it be Protoss? Will it be Zerg? These guys are, are these two teams are going to be uh, battling it out here for the next two weeks. They're neck in neck, and one of them will go on to the finals, and one will have to take on Terran in the semifinals. We'll find out who that will be coming up in week number seven, week number eight. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Hope you enjoyed this cast, and uh, if you did, go ahead and like the video subscribe i've got plenty of vodcasts on my channel now i'm doing a bunch of replays right now so uh, everything looking great there i hope you guys enjoyed those casts as well and i will see you guys in the next one